Story in the CFL last week concerned this man, veteran quarterback Joe Barnes, surprisingly traded back to Montreal and putting the onus right on young 24-year-old Rick Johnson out of Southern Illinois, who will be the Calgary starting quarterback as they try to find respectability in the ending parts of 1985. Good evening, everybody. Al McCann greeting you from Regina, where we have a rather cool evening. No wind, good playing conditions for the matchup between the Rough Riders and the Stampeders. And poor old Saskatchewan fans, what a bad month they've had. They've lost five games in a row. They're hoping tonight they can break out of the long drought. Just prior to the game, I asked Coach Jack Goda about his problems. Well, Jack, your team was a contending team until the month of September. What a black September it turned out to be. What went wrong? I think, number one, you know, we get a, a couple of key injuries, and that kind of devastates you. In other words, it just seemed like you could never make any advances that you'd like to make in, in doing things a little bit differently because uh, the new guys that are coming in just have to go back to base one. That's, that's most important. And then the other thing, of course, is that we played uh, the tougher teams. In the last four games, we had uh, Winnipeg twice and BC and Edmonton, so our opponents were also tough. And Gorda has decided to go with quarterback Joe Pow Pow tonight, although he gets criticized in lots of quarters. For more on that, let's go upstairs to Dale Isaac and Frank Rigney. Thank you, Al. Hello again, everyone. And Al was definitely right about that, Frank. Uh, Jack Gota is getting a lot of criticism for sticking with Joe Pow Pow. Joe has thrown one touchdown pass, but nine interceptions in the past fi fi five ball games. Well, of course, in the first six weeks of the CFL season, Joe Pow Pow was the leading thrower in the entire country. So it's rather difficult not to go with him uh, with that past record. But Joe has had a, a season that has been very unusual. He has not been able to put the ball in the end zone, as we talked about statistically. They're the second leading team in the country uh, on total total offense and he's actually the number one thrower in many respects the second uh, the leading team uh, throwing the football as far as yardies are concerned but they just have not been able to put it in the end zone 220 completions and only six touchdown passes now Craig Ellis is a big man for the Saskatchewan Rough Fighters. he has 13 of their 23 touchdowns this year he's gonna line up at the slot tonight well of course his biggest asset is coming out of that backfield as a receiver he and Elgard give a, a great combination on those slot backs as far as receiving is concerned but uh, Saskatchewan has not been a running football team at all so they might as well put him up there where they can use him to the best advantage. Calgary Stampeders have already been eliminated from the playoff race in the West. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders' magic number is down to one. They need to win all the remaining games and have Edmonton lose all of theirs to make it. This CFL telecast is brought to you by Carling O'Keefe Sports, bringing the sports world home to you. They've given you the advantage and only moment for the beer you choose. That's why you just say O B for that great taste in beer. O B O B O yeah, you just say O B. Gentlemen, we ask you to rise out of respect of our flag and country and join Lobotus High School, directed by Mr. Chris Hamilton, in our national anthem. charge tonight being helped out by Bill Jones, Ed Dunn, Art McAvoy, Larry Rohan, and George Black, the officiating crew for this ball game tonight at Taylor Field in Regina. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders on a five-game losing streak. Their last victory was near the end of August in Edmonton. And the Calgary Stampeders coming in here tonight. They've lost their last two in a row. Rick Johnson gets to start because Joe Barnes is in Montreal. And they, they all, I might add also, while it's raining on the ball game in Toronto, I understand it's not a bad evening here. It's been kind of a shaky weather day in Regina, but 
Temperature 7 degrees. There's a light wind blowing, favoring Saskatchewan here in the first quarter. And Saskatchewan will kick off, and you'll see that offensive line of the Stampeders out on the field in just a few moments. Dave Ridgway puts to the far side to about the 10-yard line, and Jenkins on the return got up to about the 25, and he was driven back. Tony Dennis, number 88, was in on the tackle along with Bernard King. That is the situation at Exhibition Park in Toronto at the moment. The Yankees, two runs on four hits, leading the Blue Jays 2 to nothing. They are in the bottom of the fifth inning, but in a rain delay, and we'll keep you up to date on what's happening in Toronto. Of course, the Blue Jays need one win in this three-game series to clinch the Eastern Division title. And Dale, I believe they have to complete a full five innings for that game to count. Is that not correct? That's right. The Blue Jays have to finish batting in the bottom of the fifth as Rick Johnson opens up with a little swing pass to Larry Mason, and he is forced out of bounds by Jitter Fields, number 25. Mason takes it out to about the 31-yard line. It was first and 10 at the 23. So he has a gain of eight yards, second down and two coming up. We have an injured ball player immediately. Rookie offensive tackle Randy Ambrosi is the player down on the play. 22-year-old of the University of Manitoba. He's been a very pleasant surprise for the Calgary Stampeders in his rookie year. He's a 250-pounder. Pat Clayton, the trainer of the Calgary Stampeders, Working on his right leg, you'll see 51 at the top of your screen, I believe. Somebody went down Al on the back Johns, of his leg. Uh, landed on the back of his leg, uh, Dale, as he was setting up on that pass protection. Head coach Bud Riley. Two and four record since taking over the Calgary Stampeders from Steve Barato on August the 12th. Watch uh, the defender of Saskatchewan, Al Johns, right here. Ambrosi is at the top of your screen, the right offensive tackle, and you'll see, I believe it is Johns, fall on his leg from the, from the back. Youngster's up and under his own power now as Calgary starts off with an eight and a half yard gain. Just the first offensive play of this football game. Defensively for Saskatchewan, they have made a number of changes for this ball game tonight. And if you take a good close look at the huddle, Rick Johnson, the quarterback, Looking at second down, and a little bit more than a yard to go. It's actually closer to two yards at the 31-yard line. Larry Mason stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Bernard King, Jim Hunter, a newcomer, in on the tackle. Dale, uh, Southern Illinois University is in Carbondale, Illinois, very close to my hometown, and I can tell you one thing that Rick Johnson went to a, a great athletic school. They produced some really fine athletes out of that university. One of them being quarterback Jim Hart. Absolutely, and of course, Rick Johnson beat quite a number of Jim Hart, the great St. Louis Cardinal quarterback's passing records at SIU. And look at the defensive lineup of the Riders. First and 10, Stan Peters, the ball at their own 33-yard line. A little bit of a play action fake. Johnson is in trouble, and he goes down. Gary Lewis playing his first ball game for Saskatchewan will get the sack on a loss of three yards. Lewis acquired in that big six-player trade with the Ottawa Rough Riders, but he's playing his first game. Lewis came to Saskatchewan along with Junior Robinson and Derek Zeno, and the three players from Ottawa are all in the lineup tonight. And Lewis, a six-foot three, 270-pounder out of Oklahoma State. In his first ball game. Played a couple of years with the New Orleans Saints, so he's got some pro experience. It is now second and 13. Stan Peters from their own 30. Setting up the screen to Emmanuel Tolbert. Back inside, and contact was made there. Jim Hunter, number 52, along with Steve Wilburn, 60. And Bernard King also made the tackle, and it was well short of the first down, so the Stan Peter punting unit will come onto the field. And you see Randy Ambrosi. Having that left ankle checked at the bench. Injured on the very first play from scrimmage. J.T. Hay is in the punt. And this is a part of the game tonight that Jocko, the head coach of the Riders, Jack Goat, is looking forward to the return game. He has Derek Zeno back there. You know him, of course, from Ottawa. Jitter Fields playing his first game. He's formerly with the New Orleans Saints. But they won't get a chance to return this one. It goes off the side of J.T.'s foot and out of bounds. Bad kick right at midfield. There is no score here at Taylor Field in Regina. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Chevy Cavalier. No wonder it seems everybody's driving one. GM's bestseller's got the room, the ride, and the performance. All at a Chevy price. That's a Chevy way to go now. Way to go, Chevy. Introducing a computer that can change the way you work. The new Tandy 1000, complete with deskmate software for easy-to-use word processing, filing, worksheets, scheduling, communications. Brought to you by Tandy, clearly superior for service, support, and software. The Tandy 1000, available at Radio Shack Computer Centers and so affordable. Tandy technology, service, and support are clearly superior. That's fun, huh? No score here at Taylor Field. You're looking at Randy Ambrosia, Calgary offensive tackle, who injured his left ankle early in the game. They're going to ice the ankle now. They believe it's a sprain. And whether he gets back in the game or not will depend how it responds to the icing down. Saskatchewan Rough Riders have the ball for the first time tonight. Joe Pow Pow leading the league in completions with 220, but only six touchdown passes. Intercepted a total of 16 times. Good field position for their first offensive series. Midfield, and Denny Ferdinand takes the handoff, and he's hit immediately by Vince Goldsmith, a former rider, number 78. And there will be a bit of a loss on the play. It'll be second down, about 10 and a half yards to go. Goldsmith with Chumley and James Walker making up that front defensive line for the Stampeders. Watch Roger Aldag, the left offensive guard, the veteran of that offensive unit. He pulls to the left side, and Goldsmith just goes right through the area vacated by Aldag. Big left tackle Lori Skullrud, the 12-year veteran, did not block down quick enough. Back to the live action. Papa stepping up, throwing underneath. It is complete to the newcomer, Derek Zeno, as far as Saskatchewan is concerned, and a 16-yard gain as he makes his first catch as a member of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Pretty exciting young guy on kick returns. He can also catch the football. First down. Of course, he's a leader in the Canadian Football League, returning kickoffs and second and punt returns. Great speed. So two players from Ottawa that they acquired a little over a week ago have figured prominently for Saskatchewan early in the ball game. Zeno with a 16-yard gain for first down. Gary Lewis, of course, with a sack a few moments ago. Now, once finds Ray Elgar, 25-yard line. Now they rule incomplete. And I wonder who made the call. Mel Jenkins ran up there, number 28. He said, no way he caught that football. Second down coming up. Larry Hogue did a little bit of the refereeing on that one, too. <laughs> The ball was there. It just went right through the arms of Elgard. Yeah, you certainly couldn't see him drop it even from that point of view, but the official right on top to play. Second and ten now. Just three and a half minutes into the first quarter of this ball game. The ball just inside the Calgary 40-yard line. Back into the middle to Ray Elgard, still on his feet. down from behind near the 10-yard line by Richie Hall. A gain of 29 yards for Ray Elgar. Boy, the one outstanding thing about Elgar all year long is his ability to move with that football after he catches it. He's a 230-pounder, and he is difficult for those backs to bring down. He just shook off Larry Hogue like there was nothing. I'd say he usually runs over one or two people before they finally do get him down. And you can see Elgard now just going over the 1,000 yards on that reception for the year. Near the 10-yard line. Almost oh. picked off by Mel Jenkins. The pass intended for Michael Elarms. It could have been six the other way. And it should have been, Dale. <laughs> that ball hit him right in the hands. Joe has had his problems, as Dale has mentioned already, with interceptions this year. 16 interceptions compared to only six touchdown strikes, and that's a very, very bad ratio. It's hard to believe a guy can lead the league in one area in passing and rank ninth in another area like touchdown passes. Good. Elarms was there, but he lost control of the ball when Mel Jenkins cut in front of him. 
It'll bring up third down, and the Riders again will come away without putting it in the end zone. They'll have to go for three. Hill, I really don't think you can fault Joe Pompow on this. It looked like the delivery was right there. Oh, mm -hmm. hit him right in the upper arm. Joe could not have thrown that ball any better just outside of the reach of Mel Jenkins, but no score. So it'll be an 18-yard field goal attempt by Dave Ridgway. Out of the hold by Stu Fraser. It is good, so the Saskatchewan Rough Riders open the scoring here at Taylor Field with 9.41 left in the first quarter. It is now the Riders three and the Stampeders nothing on Ridgway's 21st field goal of the season. Still, that is so typical of the type of drives that Saskatchewan has had so so many times this year. They get right down into scoring position, and for some reason, they seem to self-destruct before they can get it in the end zone. Bring you up to date on the baseball situation again. 2 nothing Yankees. They're in a rain delay in the fifth inning. If it is not a complete game tonight, CTV will have a doubleheader beginning at 1.30 Eastern time tomorrow. The drop play to Larry Mason, it really opens up for him. Mason out across the 50-yard line, stopped at about the 51. A gain of 16 yards, first down for the Stampeders. Larry Mason playing his fifth ball game of the season for the Stampeders. He joined them for the Labor Day game against the Eskimos after spending two seasons in the U.S. Football League at Jacksonville. 5'11", 205 pounds out of Troy State. First and 10 from the 51-yard line. Mason swinging out of there again, and he takes the pass from Rick Johnson. Still on his feet, Terry Irvin wraps him up and finally stops him at the 49 of Saskatchewan, and he should have another first down. And he just went right by Jitter Fields. It looked like he had a shot at making the tackle. Good block by Emmanuel Tolbert out there to spring him loose right at the line of scrimmage. Gain's going to be very close to another first down. You see Tolbert right to the outside there. He was blocking on Fields, who they should just ran right by. Calgary Stampeders now moving to football. We're having a pretty good offensive display so far, Dell. There's a look at the first down situation in 1985, Saskatchewan. As you can see, they can move the football. They rank first in first downs in the league. Calgary ranks ninth. One thing that does show you is Saskatchewan Rough Riders, even though their record is not impressive, they have been an entertaining football club to watch. But Johnson got away from trouble momentarily. Jim Hunter recovered, though, and number 52 playing his first ball game for Saskatchewan. Gets in on the tackle, helped out by Rick Moore. Now Hunter is out of Indiana, 6'2", 225, and he spent three straight years trying to crack the lineup of the New York Jets. But the Jets obviously thought enough of him to keep bringing him back. And finally, he came up to Saskatchewan. He's only been in camp a few days and was activated tonight, or just actually today, because Billy Jackson has a hamstring problem. And they do not have great depth in their linebacking core on the active roster, so they decide to go with the healthy guy. It's second down and 12. Johnson throws. Eddie Lowe could have had an interception return for a touchdown. He just cut right in front of Larry Mason. So now we're even up on defenders who could have had six going the other way. If we start this up right now, I want to show you Greg Figure. Stop it right there. Figure is right here. He starts to block his defensive man, then slips away from him. Look how wide open he is. There was absolutely nobody there. If Johnson had seen him. Figure had 15 or 20 yards to go downfield. He did not, however, so it falls incomplete, and Calgary will have to punt it away. JTA managed a 19-yarder on his first punt. This one isn't going to be much better than that. Denny Ferdinand got back at the 30-yard line, spilled immediately by Rob Bresciani. 21-yard kick, and it's a 3-0 ball game in favor of the Riders. We'll be right back. Announcing an important step forward in auto service, the Canadian Tire Service Promise. At Canadian Tire, we promise to fix your car right, and it's not right until you're satisfied. The bill you get will never be more than the estimate you approve. We guarantee our work, we guarantee our parts. We promise to do only what's necessary. For auto service that sets new industry standards, the right choice is Canadian Tire. Nothing unexpected, nothing unexplained. We promise. 
Bring home all the names on the movie marquee. Record all the games you can't be there to see. With a new VCR for the whole family. Just call Granada. Don't wait another day for your new VCR. Granada gives you more ways than ever to get one of the hot new top-of-the-line full-function VCRs and have it in your home now. Let Granada show you how to have it all and have it now. Call Granada today. One of the things that was really a mystery to Jack Gatta was Denny Ferdinand and dropping the football last week. Here's what Jocko had to say about it. That's something that was completely, you know, just kind of blew our mind. Uh, if he's the fumble one time, tonight, he'll be out of it. But I had no idea. He's not been, he's not been a fumbler. In other words, uh, every running back fumbles the football, but not put it down three times in one game. That led to three field goals against the Riders last week, and... Certainly they hope to correct that problem. Paul Paul's pass batted up in the air by Vince Goldsmith, and it falls incomplete. It went high enough in the air that both players, Paul Paul and Goldsmith, got turned around and adjusted to it and almost had a race for the ball. <laughs> I think we were I thought we were gonna have a jump ball here. <laughs> Paul Paul does a good job of screening Goldsmith out of the way when that ball is up in the air. Could have easily been picked off. Three nothing, the riders lead. On a field goal by Ridgeway. And right now it's second down and ten. Saskatchewan from their own 30-yard line. Pow Pow goes to the shotgun for me. Has to step up again and just tried to dump it off to Denny Ferdinand over his head. And it's third down now for Saskatchewan. And they'll have to punt the football away. 652 remaining in the opening quarter. You can see Ferdinand set up on his block and just Move to the outside, very similar to that pattern that Fieger tried moments ago, only this time he went to the outside. Joe just threw the ball too hard. And you're looking at Jerry McGrath. Ninth in the CFL running average. Hangs this one up there. Carries well. Richie Hall fumbles at 40 yard line. He managed to get back to it just before Mike Anderson of the Riders got there. 40 yard punt. And no return, so the Stampeders will start from their own 39. Here's a case of Richie Hall. The ball floating on him just a little bit. You don't see that very often. No, sir. And Richie does not make mistakes. Especially doesn't want to make mistakes today. It's his 25th birthday. Well, the guy that really uh, amazes me is Ferdinand. His fourth year in the league, and he's still only 23 years old. Right, yeah. Coming out of the junior Alouettes. Rick Johnson goes to Greg Fieger, and Bernard King wraps him up 45 yard line, gain of about six, close to seven yards on the play. Fieger, former Rough Rider, there's a number of players playing against their former teammates tonight. Fieger and Foley on the offensive unit for the Stampeders, along with Emmanuel Tolbert, are all former Rough Riders, as is Rob Bresciani, a backup Canadian receiver. Rick Johnson looks at the rider defense on second down and three. And to get into the middle, Fieger is pushed right back. May have got two yards maximum out of it. Depends on, it looks like he's going to get a pretty good spot on the play up at the 48 and a half yard line. Didn't look to me like he got that much forward progress, but it's going to be just a little bit short of the first down. You know, so far this Rick Johnson looks like he belongs anyway, Dale. He's very cool and running a good offense. That time he came up a yard short. They, I think the Stampeders are going to kick it away, but I'm sure Stampeder fans are really looking forward to Johnson having a good evening, get a little confidence in him so that they can finish the season on a high note. Well, he's got two seasons of USFL experience, although not a lot of playing time. He backed up Doug Williams with Oklahoma Outlaws. I talked to him yesterday, and he said, the thing he has to really adjust to defensively and what the teams do, that extra defensive back. Yeah, what J.T. Hayes punted away. Doug Zeno and downfield coverage is excellent by the Calgary Stampeders, led by center Bob Pole, along with Tom Spolatini. 42-yard punt, and the return is just two yards. 
The Riders have a couple of pretty exciting young guys back there in Zeno and Jitter Fields to return kicks. And Dale, you talk about excitement. I think Canadian Football League fans across the country have been looking forward to this Sunday. Showdown number one, one of BC Lions and Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Many people think the two best teams in the country battle right. out. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers really need to win that first one of back-to-back -back games among the two leading teams in the country. Back here at Tater Field. Craig Ellis on the receiving end of this Joe Powell Powell pass. And he gets it out to about the 33-yard line. It should be a first down Saskatchewan. I like that showdown number one. Fernandez and Boyd. Clements and DeWalt. Jenkins and Reeves and the... Two best defenses in the country, Barn. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They're within a half a point of each other defensively and points given up. But as I say, Winnipeg really has to win that first football game in their own ballpark. That's right. They go right back to BC the following Friday night. Ellis pops one. Hold forces him out of bounds, but it's another first down for Saskatchewan as they get. Back-to-back -back first downs, thanks to Craig Ellis. First on a pass, then running the ball. This time he gains 14 yards. And thanks to Roger Aldag, number 44, who comes out from that left offensive guard position. He's 10 years with the Riders, and he's the only guy on the field tonight that played in the last Grey Cup game that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders were in, and the only Rider that has any playoff experience at all. Good luck. Denny Ferdinand turns it upfield and gets to about the 54-yard line for a gain of seven yards. Anthony Woodson, number 96. The linebacker making the stop on Ferdinand, as we heard moments ago from Jack Goda, had problems hanging on to the football in Vancouver last weekend and led to three, three field goals by the BC Lions. Almost won the... Shunley Award back in 1983, finishing runner-up to Paul Bennett. To Ferdinand again, and he's got a first down to the Calgary 51-yard line. So the Rough Riders starting to move the football. Richie Hall making the tackle. Saskatchewan on their opening drive from midfield moved in for a field goal, and that's why they lead 3-0. They have now picked up five first downs here in the opening quarter as they're on the move again back into Calgary territory. Dan, you guys were alluding to the big game on Sunday. There's another interesting factor. Would you believe the homestanding Winnipeg Blue Bombers are undefeated at home, but the visiting BC Lions are undefeated on the road? What a natural. It's got everything going for it. Sunday on CTV, the Bombers and Lions. Pop out. on that play for Derek Zeno. He slipped down, got up, made the catch, ran a couple steps, fumbled, then recovered it for a gain of 26 yards. <laughs> Perfect throw by Joe. Put it out there with a lot of moxie on the ball. Looked like Hopkins, the defender, <laughs> was beaten on the play, but he did. He fell down, got up, dropped the ball, got back on it. After all that, they got a first down to the 25-yard line. Maybe that's a good sign for the suspension Rough Riders tonight. Ferdinand, the ball carrier, gets to about the 23, 22 yard line. He has a gain of maybe three yards on the play. You think Denny's not holding on to that Gold ball Smith. tight, Dale? You bet. Watch the great pursuit by the linebacker coming from the weak side. Boy, excellent quickness. I think it was Woodson. It was Woodson, 96. That's showing great agility to get in and make that stop for only a two and a half yard gain. So Pawpaw goes back to the shotgun formation on second down and eight. He lines inside the five. Touchdown. Saskatchewan Rough Riders, Michael Elarms, his third touchdown of the season for Joe Pawpaw. That is a big one for him, his seventh touchdown pass of the year. And a perfect strike. Well, the Riders only scored five touchdowns in the entire month of September, so they've got October off on a better foot. 
That they have. They're not that bad a football club, but boy, in September, things were just rotten for them. Well, they certainly haven't had any problems moving the football. As we mentioned at the top of the show, the second team in total offense in the country. They just have not scored that many touchdowns, but they did put it away there. So with 103 remaining, we're going to pause for this. For seven years, we shared the place kicking duties. Yeah, yeah. Pull this, Steve. I did the holding. Jack did the kicking. Give me a hand. Now we're sharing Miller Lite. It's great right here in Canada. We drink it because it tastes great. No, we drink it because it tastes less filling. Tastes great. Tastes less filling. Tastes great. Oh. Right there. Ah, hold it yourself. <laughs> Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Red or white, Hathaway? <laughs> Nothing in the red. Reminds me of business. Troubles? Sales costs are way up. Orders are really slow. You'll find this appealing. Telemarketing. Sales support, customer service, order processing. It's all in there. Just call for a free copy. A waiter, he'll have the catch of the day. Flounder. Never with telemarketing. AGT, a member of Telecom Canada. 1-800-361-3050. This is my car. It takes a big chunk out of my paycheck every month. So I want... I want this car to last. That's why I use Quaker State. It's especially... Blended motor oil. Made to help my car last for a long, long time. And a long, long time... Is How long I intend to keep my wheels... Because to tell you the truth... A long, long time is how long it's going to take me to pay it off. Quaker State helps cars last. Saskatchewan Rough Riders just getting a touchdown from Michael Elarms on a pass from Joe Pow Pow. And Dave Ridgway kicks it off again. In the end zone, tag Rome on the return. Hello, Scott Reddle making the tackle on tag <laughs> Rome, a 22-yard return. Boy, that's hitting them and making them go backwards, isn't it? <laughs> Riggs, I was talking earlier about the streaks these two teams have as we look at this replay of that big hit. Uh, the BC Lions uh, winning eight consecutive games on the road now, going back to last season. Uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have won a flock at home in a row. How many did you Bombers win on the road in a row? I know you set a record of things. Well, uh, thank you very much for that setup. I didn't even realize <laughs> back when we were playing, we won 20 in a row on the road. So. That is the league record. Well, is that a good time when we try? Tolbert. Missed the catch, goes out of bounds, thanks to Jim Hunter. And it's a gain of about seven yards on the play. Second down and three. Emmanuel Tolbert, the leading receiver for the Calgary Stampeders this year. And he's really their big play guy. The longest catch of the season, a 67-yarder. Former Saskatchewan North Rider in Toronto, Argonaut. Hit by Hunter at the 30-yard line. He fell across the 30-yard line. He'll be very close to a first down. We may need a, another measurement here. I think we should take this little uh, moment out, Dale, to congratulate uh, belatedly Frank on his most recent Hall of Fame induction, the Manitoba Hall of Fame. Nice to have you with us, Riggs, for a week. Uh, no Hall of Fames this week, eh? Well, thank you, Al. It actually wasn't the Manitoba Hall of Fame. It's Winnipeg Football Club uh, Hall of Fame, but I appreciate your... Uh, a compliment, thank you. You've been into so many, I mixed them up now. <laughs> it is a first down for the Stampeders. The ball at their own 31-yard line. They trail 10-0. This could be the last play of the opening quarter. The middle opens up for Larry Mason. Mason gets out to near the 45-yard line. And we have one second left in the opening quarter. A pickup of 14 yards and another first down for the Stampeders. Well, Mason's had some big holes out there. Uh, in that Saskatchewan defensive line, he looks a little bit tentative when he gets downfield, doesn't he? This will probably be barring a penalty, the last play of the first quarter. It's a 10 nothing lead by the Riders at the moment. Johnson put it up to end the first quarter, and he just misfired on that one. Didn't even come close to connecting with Dan Run, so it's 10-0 Riders at the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with the second right after this. When you hear that distant whistle song and the steel wheel down the track, there's bread 
on the table and clothes on your back. The freight we all take for granted is heading here on time. The best things in life are all aboard the CP railway line. I work the CP railway line. I go where the steel rail guides me. I'm bound to haul a heavy load down a independent road. I work Helping Canada move forward. Winter's coming, so get ready. Insulate with Styrofoam SM brand insulation. And wrap your home in a blanket of comfort and fuel savings. Right now, there's windfall cash when you buy Styrofoam SM insulation. With every purchase, scratch. And win up to $50 cold cash for a warm home. This fall, everybody wins with Styrofoam SM brand insulation. See your participating dealer. Back for the second quarter at Tetterfield and Regina with the hometown Rough Riders in front of the Stampeders, 10-0. The Stampeders looking at second down and 10 to get this second quarter underway. They're at their own 44-yard line. Johnson throws complete to Ray Alexander, number 88. And Alexander's a good-looking new receiver for the Stampeders. He picks up 14 yards. Excellent hands uh, working against the veteran Terry Irving. Irving giving quite a bit of room there, four or five yards, but a fine catch by the former Denver Bronco. Coming into the ball game, he only caught eight for 92 yards, but he'll make that kind of catch for them. First and ten, Ryder 52. Johnson by Gary Lewis, and he has his second sack of the ball game. Boy, Gary Lewis has really had himself a game so far, and loss of eight. Boy, I'll tell you, he just does it with quickness as you look at the Chevy stats in that first quarter, and they reflect that Saskatchewan lead, although Calgary's certainly not being shut out offensively. They had a net of 70 yards versus 132 for the Riders. But now they're faced with a second and 19. See Lewis's second sack of the ball game. There is Lewis, Gary Lewis, a big guy who can move pretty well with a play action fake now on second and long by Johnson. He gets out of there, tripped up by Al Johns as he got to midfield. Johns just sprawled and managed to trip him up from behind. And so Johnson heads to the bench, and the punting unit is back out. You get pressure and penetration by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders right side. And you see Johns just get that hand on Rick Johnson. J.T. Hay to punt. No, he's going to pass on third down, waiting for the ball and making the catch. It's Scott Bissessar. And the rookie Canadian receiver makes his first catch as a member of the Calgary Stampeders out of Queen's University. It's a 22-yard gain for Scott Bissessar, the pass from J.T. Hay. <laughs> Is that what you call that? <laughs> he certainly did not put too much on it, did he? <laughs> kind of floated it up there, but Bissessar was so wide open, he stood there and waited for it. And a big first down as the Stampeders keep possession. Way to go, J.T. Bissessar was lined up way to the left, and Saskatchewan didn't even notice him. Johnson puts it deep. Touchdown, Emmanuel Tolbert. Great throw from Rick Johnson to Tolbert. 33-yard score. All right, the stamps right back in this ball game with two quick plays from midfield. J.T. Hayes throw, and now... A perfect strike from Rick Johnson. Good protection on that blitz, and you see the man-to-man -man coverage back there. Eddie Ray Walker is beat cleanly by Emmanuel Tolbert. And boy, that's the arm that Bud Riley's been talking about. He just kind of flicked that one, and it was right on the money to E.T. for his fifth touchdown of the season. Yeah, he called Rick Johnson a young Dieter Brock. I don't know if he can give him that much uh, of a compliment yet, but the Stampeders put seven on the board. They trail by three, and we'll be back in just a moment.
earned this vacation, haven't you? Oh, you bet. So why are you paying for it? What? With Aeroplan, Air Canada's frequent flyer program, flying a little or a lot can save you a bundle. A bundle? On car rentals, hotels, airfare. Airfare? Sure. Think about it. If you join now, there's always next year and the year after. Aeroplan. One good thing leads to another. Uh, there's always next year. Now. <laughs> well, the touchdown by the Stampeders set up by J.T. Hayes' first completed pass in his CFL career. I'll tell you something, Dill. As you look at that touchdown strike from Rick Johnson, at J.T. Hayes' play, really, you've got to give a lot of credit to the Calgary coaching staff who are sitting up here and noticed that their wide cover men on that punt coverage were not being defended all at all. Great call. Jitter Fields from the four-yard line. Finally brought down by Garrett Dahl, number 40. 39-yard return for young Jitter Fields, who set a New Orleans Saints record last year with a 61-yard punt return against my hometown St. Louis Cardinals he did that too mm -hmm. great speed out of the University of Texas only 5-9 riders first down from their own 38 yard line they lead it 10 7 the drop play Denny Ferdinand hit right at the line of scrimmage he falls forward for a gain of bone yard on the play James Walker the rookie out of Kansas State there to meet him at the line of scrimmage I think he's really protecting that football <laughs> very well today, too. Watch how he holds on to it. Freddie Fleming has pointed out to us that every time he has carried the football, he seems to have given it a little extra protection after the three fumbles last week. Second down and nine out of the shotgun. Powerful looking for Derek Zeno. He's got him. Derek Zeno with his second catch of the ball game. First down Saskatchewan at the Calgary 52-yard line. A pickup of 17. Hopkins made the tackle. I think David Conrad, number 37, thought the ball was intended for him and was overthrown, but it was actually a perfect strike. Saskatchewan moving the football again. 130-some yards of total offense in the first quarter, and they're continuing on. Graphic. Zeno is now top three tonight in his first game with Saskatchewan. Hopwell <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. buying himself lots of time. Going for Zeno, he's got him. First down at the 22 yard line. Hopkins making the tackle on Zeno again, and they pick up 30 more yards. Oh boy, a good combination all of a sudden as Joe rolls to his right side, and Dale pointed out a lot of time to throw the football. And a perfect strike by Joe. Actually, Joe's been throwing the ball very well. He that. sure has. He's had a couple of them dropped on him, and his stats would be out, just outstanding. Another first down, Saskatchewan, 22-yard line. Zeno, the defensive back has fallen on the play. Hopkins managed to get back up. Forced Zeno out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. They'll spot it at the 8, first and goal. 15-yard gain for Zeno. And he is fast becoming... Joe Pow Pow's favorite receiver. He wants to come out of that ball game. He's waving to the bench to have someone get in there for him. Three straight receptions by Zeno. Tony Dennis will replace Zeno as the wide receiver. Interesting having Jocko talk about Tony Dennis last night. He says he's done such a great job in practice. In ball games, he has not been that outstanding. You see the baseball score there. That's resumed in Toronto. Ferdinand slipped down, got back up, but he'll lose yardage. Got to the 10-yard line. You only have to play another half an inning, Dale, in that ball game, I believe, for it to become official. So Jays will like finish their at bat in the bottom of the fifth. The Jays are going to have to score. And that's Three what they haven't been doing lately is scoring runs. Well, they'll get that game in, guys, even if it takes two and three hour rain delays. What was that deal earlier? We had a three hour, 18 minute rain delay in a game. Al, well, they said uh, out of Toronto, the information we got that they wait as long as midnight to get that ball game to end. Down time for the Riders, goal to goal. Close, touchdown. Derek Zeno. His first touchdown as a member of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
Boy, oh boy, and Joe Papa all day back there to throw the football. Absolutely no pressure from the Calgary Stampeders. Watch this. Joe just stands back there, stands back there, and finally, you can't cover him that long for sure. Zeno, six catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown. It's really amazing, too, Dale, you know, because the Calgary Stampeders ranked third in the CFL in terms of sacking the opposing quarterback. But on that drive, absolutely no pressure as Pow Pow throws for his second touchdown. So with the score 17-7, we'll pause for this. Got to replace a dead battery? Drop in the Live Eye battery, the Delco Freedom 2. It's so good, it's unique. It's the one to get you started on the coldest, wettest days. The one that's forgiving when you forget to turn off your headlights. The one that's guaranteed to keep you charged up for years. The Delco Freedom 2 with the Live Eye. Get it and forget it. It keeps an eye on itself. The Delco Freedom 2. We got it. Parts to go at your GM dealer or installed in our service department. Boy, are you smart. Waiting till now to buy an 85. Nicholson's 85 clear-out sale of cars, pickups, and medium-duty trucks is worth the wait. Plus, we pass on our year-end factory rebates so you save twice as much. Plus, we'll pay no less than $1,000 when you trade up to any new or used vehicle. We pay more for used motorhomes, too. 85 clear-out sale prices, factory rebates, $1,000 minimum trade-in allowance at Nicholson Chevrolet. Aren't you glad you waited? How to improve your slice. Grab a Husqvarna Weekend Pro Chainsaw, like a new Model 40. It's packed with power and reliability and built to last. Its excellent power-to-weight ratio and superior vibration dampening make your work less work. And that leaves you more time for the really hard stuff. Available in Slave Lake at Crisco's Sports and in St. Albert at Phil Hool's Repair. Okay, we're back at Taylor Field, and last week the question was, should the CFL allow the referees access to TV replays? And 78% said yes. And our question for the night, back to you, who has the kickoff, is returned out to the 30-yard line. Anyway, here is the question tonight. Should holding be called only when it directly affects the play? And the numbers to call, 50-cent service charge. Stan Peters will take over, first down from their own 30, as you look at the kickoff once more. And... Pretty good coverage by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The ball right at the 30-yard line. There's Bernard King coming to hit on tag row. We look at Derek Zeno, the man who just scored a touchdown, playing his first game in Saskatchewan. Having a big first half, over 100 yards. Larry Mason with the ball, tipped up at the line of scrimmage by Steve Wilburn, former Stampeder number 60. And he stopped at about the 31, a gain of one yard on the play. Can I have a vote in that uh, holding question there, Dale? <laughs> I don't think it should ever be <laughs> Just kidding. Speaking as an old offensive lineman. Let's don't use that. Let's just say former. <laughs> Second down and nine. Johnson gets away from trouble. And then he's hit from behind just as he released the ball. Is caught by Greg Feger. But Feger was stopped immediately. And now we have a penalty marker down. Eddie Lowe in on the tackle against Feger. The I think it was upfield. I think he had a clip downfield. By Paul Palma, 66. Or he may be calling it rough play. Looks like he blocked from the rear. There's Rick Johnson avoiding that initial rush. And you see Steve Wilburn coming from the backside and put him down. Major foul. Unnecessary roughness. That Third down. Paul Palma, I'm sure. As John Ireland marches off the penalty against the Calgary Stampeders. And once again, the Riders should get the ball pretty good shape. J.T. Hay to punt from inside his own 10-yard line. You know, almost blocked by Eddie Lowe. Towering kick by J.T. Jitter Fields on the return. Oh. And back to the 53-yard line. The Riders in good field position. They lead it 17-7 over the Stampeders. We'll be right back. They've given 
given you the advantage and only moments to make it count. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the beer you choose. That's why you just say O.B. for that great taste in beer. O.B. O.B. Oh yeah, you just say O.B. Your GM dealer's 1986 All-Star Kickoff is on. Let's go! See the great new 86 lineup of cars and trucks. Let's go! Get in on all the big savings. Let's go! With special value option packages. Take a test drive. You could win a weekend at the Grey Cup. So get down to your GM dealer's 1986 All-Star Kickoff by October 5th. Make your best deal now. Let's go! 8.22 left to go in the second quarter. Riders lead by 10 over the Stampeders in Saskatchewan with the ball at their own 53-yard line. Following a 48-yard punt by J.T. Hay and a return of 8 by Jitter Fields and Joe Pow Pow. You see 9 out of 14 tonight, but he's completed his last seven in a row. And he's thrown two touchdown passes tonight. One to Michael Elarms, one to Derek Zeno. And I'll tell you what, if they'd all been caught, he'd be about 11 or 12 out of 14, and he'd had another yep. touchdown. He's had a couple drop on him. One in the end zone. And the play action trying to set up the screen. He does to David Conrad. And the rookie from Acadia looks like he's got a first down as he gets to the Stampeder 46. Walker making the tackle from behind the defensive end for the Stampeders. You're looking at a ball club that is first in passing yardage in the Canadian Football League, first in first down, second in total offense, and yet have lost five in a row. And the team that hasn't made the playoffs since 1976. Craig Ellis, who lunged for the football and couldn't bring it down. Second and ten. Quick decision by Paupa, I think, to go to Ellis. He wasn't intending to originally. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Out first now in the Stampede ball seven to this point. Popov looking at second and ten, and they'll work from the shotgun formation. Popov puts it up deep down the middle. Who's got it? Nobody ends up with it. Ellis and Elgard were both there. Richie Hall, I believe, came over there and knocked that ball down. I'm not sure who it was intended for. Dale, the two receivers of the Riders were right together. But watch Hall, number 27, come out on the left side there. That's Elgard, but also Ellis is right there. Richie Hall was guarding defending against Ellis and knocked the football down. I can't believe that that was the pattern that was called with two receivers in exactly the same spot. Both receivers recognized Blitz and went to the same area. Second punt of the ball came from McGrath. Bag Rome gets it out to the 15-yard line. 33-yard punt and a return of two. And the Stampeders will have to start fairly deep in their own zone. And we have 6.47 remaining to play in the second quarter. Stampeders trail 17 to 7. to him at the 10-yard line, and that is the third sack of the ball game for the Stampeders, the first by Moore, the previous two by Gary Lewis, and be a loss of six yards in the play. Rick Johnson has gone all the way at quarterback so far for the Stampeders. The backup tonight is Greg Vavra. Actually, the Stampeders are going in import short uh, after trading Joe Barnes, they activated Vavra, of course, a Canadian, and they have 14 imports in the lineup tonight of 20 Canadians. after going off the hands of Greg Fieger, so they'll have to punt. Updated score now from Toronto. It's unconfirmed at this point, I guess. Okay. Thought we had another score for you, but we're not going to 
give you that until we're absolutely sure it's correct. Well, I think that that's what you should do. Give us a hint, Dale. That's good for the Blue Jays. That's what I heard anyway. <laughs> J.T. Hay will have to punt the football once more, and he's standing in his own end zone, so the Saskatchewan Northriders should have good field position, but J.T. gets a beauty. Derek Zeno back in his own 50-yard line. And he really stopped at midfield. He's an exciting guy, even though he only got about six yards returning that. He looks like he's about to break every one of them. Following tonight's game, the Carling O'Keefe Sports Game Stars will be receiving this Royal Canadian Mint one-ounce gold coin. Presented by Kodak, makers of the new 8mm Kodavision video systems featuring the portable all-in-one camera and recorder from Kodak. Five and a half minutes remaining until halftime. The Riders with great field position. They're at the Calgary 54-yard line. They lead by 10. Pop a little play action. Throws just as he has hit the ball. Goes up in the air incomplete now. Joe's hurt. Big hit on Pow Pow by Mark Nelson, I think it was. No, it was Don Chumley, I believe. Oh, okay. 63. You'll see him coming from the top of your screen. Chumley gets by Vic Stevenson, the right offensive tackle, and it's a big shot on Joe. Frank, I was, uh, Frank excuse me, I was talking to Don Chumley uh, earlier, and he uh, uniquely out of the University of Georgia, but guess where he was born, Frank? He was born in Heidelberg, West Germany. Oh, yeah. darn, you know everything. <laughs> he yeah. also was a teammate of Knox Culpepper right. at the University of Georgia. Bull, uh, Bulldog. The His dad was in the military. That's why he was born in Germany. Ooh. It's now 2-2 two, two, two two. in Toronto. And that is confirmed. Then. <laughs> First and 20. Halpaw goes to David Conrad. He gets to the Stampeder 51-yard line. Picks up about 13 yards. It'll be second down and seven. And Al, no more trick questions, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that score is wrong there. It's 2-2 now in the bottom of the fifth inning. Now you got it. There we go. They're all even up right across the board. Third down and seven. Pavel's in trouble. Mark Nelson got there first. He had help from Bernie Morrison as the two outside linebackers meet at the quarterback, and that'll bring up a punting situation. They put the uh, linebacker in a down position here, as you'll see. Mark Nelson, he comes in there totally untouched by anybody. Got off the ball very well. Left tackle's tied up with Vince Goldsmith, and nobody touched Nelson at all. Of course, the son of the former great Roger Nelson of Edmonton Eskimo fame for so many years. So Jerry McGrath into punt once more. Stamp Peters comes oh. charging hard. It's a good kick by McGrath coming to Richie Hall at the 15-yard line. The little guy just puts his head down and gets it back to the 25 for a return of 10 yards. And that little guy, Richie Hall, is fearless out there. A 40-yard punt and a 10-yard return. Bernie Morrison was the Stampeders that almost got that kick. The well, Stampeders have the ball back, and an, we have an injured rough rider on the play. Mark Ernest, who snaps on third down, punts. Number 54 is the injured Saskatchewan rough rider. He, too, a son of a former CFL great, Ted Ernest, who was all CFL center many, many times. Watch how busy your two up backs were back there. Marson, 72, at the bottom of your screen was the one that almost got to that football. Ellis having to make a choice. There's just too many guys coming. You can only block one of them. Well, he made the right choice. That's You're right. supposed to take the inside man, work from the inside out, because he's got the best chance to block the kick. Jocko on the sideline, I'm sure very pleased with his offensive display tonight. Joe Pow Pow having only two, or having six touchdown passes for the year, and he's got two already in the first half. And over 200 yards rush or passing for Pow Pow so far, as you see Mark Ernest being helped to the bench. At the halftime, I'm going to be talking to J.T. Hay, but I hope you can hear us because, believe me, they're going to have quite a band extravaganza during the half. Would you believe they have 1,300 young musicians out on the field preparing for this halftime show? Play-action 
option fake. Johnson can't find anybody open, and he'll go down. Fourth sack against the Stampeder quarterback. Rick Moore was there, so was Gary Lewis, Scott Rettle, and who else? Steve Wilburn. They were all there. Hey, you know one thing about this young quarterback, he may not be finding his receivers as quickly as he will when he gets a little more experience, but at least he's not throwing into coverage and so forth. He's swallowing that football, not giving up the interception. He lost two or three yards, but at least he's got a chance now to pick up a first down and keep the drive alive. They try the draw on second and 13, and it works big. Larry Mason has a lot of running room. Trying to get outside, going to be cut from behind by Jim Hunter. The ball pops loose, but they're going to rule the play dead. And a big gain of 39 yards for the Calgary Stampeders. And we have 2.55 remaining in the first half. Ten-point lead for Saskatchewan, and we'll be right back. Can I help you? Hi there. Where can we play Lotto West? Come all this way to play our lot of West, eh? Sure did. Great game. Wish we had it. Beats our game. Well, now, folks here don't take kindly to outsiders playing our lot of West. Kind of keep it for ourselves, you understand? But you're welcome to enjoy our lovely mountains, lakes, forests, and prairie, though. Need some gas? Lot of West. Next stop, let's not mention lot of West. It's going to be late. No, it's not. It's going to be late. For reliable economic delivery on a rush or urgent shipment, call Fastest Flight. It's going to be late. No, it's not. Fastest Flight is expedited highway transportation at down-to-earth prices. Fastest Flight is dependable door-to-door -door service for just about any volume of anything from the St. Lawrence to the Pacific. Call Fastest Flight next time you have a deadline to meet. You're going to be sick. No, you're not. Big 39-yard gain on second and 12. And watch Big Dan runs, a six-foot-nine slot back. He gets in the way of fields and allows Mason to go right by him. Good play on second and 12 by the staff. Back to the live action. Johnson throws this one out of bounds. That <laughs> globe is over there and Gator the gopher. Got hit with the football. Johnson now checks the plays he has taped to his wrist. It's second down and 10 Stampede is the ball at the Saskatchewan 49 yard line. We have 240 remaining in the second quarter. Saskatchewan leading 17 to 7. Sets up the screen to Emmanuel Colbert. He is tripped up by. Jim Hunter, number 52, and the newcomer playing his first game for Saskatchewan has been in on a lot of tackles. Well, he's made some really big plays for the Riders. You can see why New York Jets kept bringing him back. <laughs> yeah. He's actually, you know, a great size for a linebacker in the Canadian Football League. He's not all that big, just over 220 pounds. Six very, very two. active. Out of Indiana. Chased down Mason on that 39-yard scamper just a moment ago. 2.30 remaining now in the first half. That stop he just made on Tolbert forces the Stampeders into a punting situation. J.T. Hay angles it for the sidelines and it kicks left out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So defensively now the Stampeders would hope to pin the Saskatchewan Rough Riders here and force them to give up the football. That's a 31-yard punt. But of course no return on the play at all. So with 2.21 left, in the second quarter, the Stampeders just hope to prevent Saskatchewan from picking up any first downs here and using up too much of the clock here before halftime. I don't want to belabor the point, Dale, but that whole drive and that big play by him was made available because Johnson pulled that ball down and took a couple of yard loss rather than throwing it into cover. Denny Ferdinand gets it out to the 20 yard line. Walker's there along with Larry Hogue, number 14, to put the stop on him after a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Dale Young, Mark Ernest, the number 54 of Saskatchewan, took a shot on the knee in the last series of plays. He's walking it out at the bench. They're hoping he can get back in the second half. Saskatchewan Rough Riders have had much better third down snaps since they activated Mark Ernest uh, just before that game up in Edmonton in late August. Rolling away from the pressure. Caught up with him back at the 10. 
Chumley got there along with Goldsmith and Mark Nelson for a loss of 10. And the Stampeder defense does its job in forcing the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to punt the ball away. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Joe Papa is going to remember number 63. <laughs> That's the second great shot they put on him. He's put on him in this quarter. Baseball score now. It's after five complete. They're tied at two in Toronto. The Blue Jays and the Yankees. Apparently the Blue Jays have one man on base. Nobody out. There you see the score now. And the time remaining here in the second quarter at Taylor Field as Jerry McGrath punch short kick. It's a good bounce. Richie Hall doubled it. Then got back to it. Slipped away from Ray Elgard and dove to the Saskatchewan 50-yard line where he was pinned by Jim Hunter. So the Stampeders take over. There you see 131 left in the second quarter and they have great field position. That punt was a 38-yarder. And good field position for one of the few times in this second quarter of the ball game. Stamps can get right back in it now with 130 remaining. Johnson with the roll right. Throws and it's picked off by Terry Irvin. His sixth interception of the year, but we have a penalty marker down. This may be wiped out by a roughing the passer penalty. Well, Rick didn't make a good judgment there in throwing into this coverage. It looked like the intended receiver was Big Ray Alexander. The ball was well over his head. Terry Irvin who picked off three passes in one ball game earlier this year that we did, and it is going to be a wiped out by the penalty. Major foul, roughing the passer, Saskatchewan number 79. First down. Gary Lewis hit the quarterback well after he'd thrown the ball, and that is definitely one of the reasons Saskatchewan Rough Riders have the record they have this year. They're their most penalized team in the CFL by a long shot. I don't know if that's true, though, Dale, because the least penalized team is Calgary, and their record isn't anything outstanding. But it has resulted in a lot of drive killers for Saskatchewan oh. Johnson, who admitted yesterday he does not throw well on the run, managed to get that one to Ray Alexander, even though it wasn't pretty, he got the job done at the 26-yard line. I tell you, he does run well, though. He, he bought himself some time there. And again, Alexander came up with his second outstanding catch in this first half. The gain is about nine yards. Calgary's offense now is, is really geared to Johnson's style, which is that of a drop-back quarterback. He says he, there's no way, he was telling me yesterday, he throws the ball as well on the run as Joe Barnes does, or Greg Babra, for that matter. But he sets up in the pocket. Second and short, Greg Fieger takes the handoff and gets inside the 25, and it should be a well, first down. That is a bad, bad penalty. You watch at the top of your screen, Emmanuel Tolbert, who is not even involved in the play, goes in motion. But he they didn't call I don't it. think it's going to be called against him. No, there's no penalty now. No. Nope. Right. You see him move too quickly, and that you know that's the kind of mistake you just can't afford. He's not even involved. He, he got away with it though. It's first down for the Stampeders. <laughs> Oh, Ray Alexander almost made a spectacular catch. It looked like Dave Singh was the intended receiver. It looked like the ball was going right to him. What an outstanding effort. Oh. And Alexander at six foot four just stretched out for it and almost came down with a touchdown catch. Watching from the reverse angle now, he can really get up in the air. What an outstanding attempt. Into the middle, they go to Greg Figger. He's to the 15-yard line, close to a first down. Hunter teams up to bring him down, along with Bernard King. Another fairly recent... I think that's going to be just short, Dale, but it's very close to it. Figger knew exactly what he needed to do to get the first down. As you see, 47 seconds remaining. I mentioned Bernard King. He has not been with the Rough Riders all that long. Fourth game. And Jim Hunter playing his first game. They managed to stop him just shy of the first down. Third and a little bit inside the Saskatchewan 15-yard line. Hey, 
last minute of play here in the second quarter. 17-7 at the moment in favor of Saskatchewan. Third down gamble for the Stampeders. And he just went right in behind his big center, Bob Poley, and picks up the first down. Spot the ball at the Saskatchewan 13-yard line. Watch Eddie Lowe, 42. He knows what the play is going to be. <laughs> He's trying to get up there and hit the quarterback. Goes right over the top of him. Lots of time remaining for them to get in the end zone. 33 seconds. They're on the 13-yard line. Johnson on first down, looking for Tolbert, and he dropped the football. What a great throw right there. That is not an easy pass, but you got to have the arm to be able to get that ball out there like that, and it was right in his arms. Oh, he, he couldn't it. have thrown that football any better, and that, that would have been another first down, if not a touchdown. Second down and 10, and the Stampeders have now called a timeout. Johnson will go to the bench as you look at it again from the reverse angle right there. And E.T. couldn't squeeze it. Boy, the snap so close to a touchdown just moments ago with Ray Alexander. And then that, that one dropped. It'll be second and 10. 22 seconds remaining. That's Greg Vavra in the warm-up jacket talking to his quarterback running mate there. Bud Riley is... Discussing with the youngster just exactly what they should try here. Well, tomorrow there's one game in the Canadian Football League, and that has Matt Dunnigan, the Edmonton Eskimos, playing Ken Hobart and the Hamilton Tiger Cats at Ivor Wynn, starting at 7.30 in Hamilton. On Sunday on CTV, the big game. It's the BC Lions, the showdown for first with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The Lions at 10-1, and one, the Bombers at 9-3, and three, and also on Sunday... And Ottawa Rough Riders go at it at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa. Second and 10, Stan Peters, Saskatchewan 15 yard line. 22 seconds remaining until halftime. Johnson, incomplete. Dave Singh almost had an interception. Well, oh, yeah, the pass was intended for Alexander. Triple coverage on him. He threw it right into the coverage. Singh a little upset that he didn't make the interception, but. Stamps will have to settle for a three-point attempt here. Good defense there. Irvin. Terry Irvin releases Alexander to the inside. You saw once again Jim Hunter back there, number 52, helping underneath. So it'll be a field goal attempt from J.T. Hay, 20 yards away, and Rick Johnson will do the holding. And J.T. Hay connects with 16 seconds left in the first half, his 23rd field goal of the season. And it's now 17-10 in favor of Saskatchewan coming into the ball game. J.T. Hay, fourth in CFL scoring with 95 points. He has kicked four here tonight, make it 99. Let's get back to our question for tonight and our CFL poll. Should holding be called only when it directly affects the play? I think that should be the case. 1-900-720-3720. And no 720-4720. Riders at their own 35-yard line. Just rounding the football. And fans here <laughs> not too happy about that. Yeah, they wanted him to go downfield. Coming up at halftime. And we'll take a look at the CFL this week. And our close-up feature tonight will be with Ricky Turner, the quarterback of the Toronto Argonauts. And Frank and I will be along with highlights of this, what has turned out to be an entertaining first half of football. Our ball is grounded again, and that's going to do it. To a chorus of boos, the hometown crowd didn't like that at all as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders content to head to the dressing room with a seven-point lead rather than extending it. But okay, Dale, I've got J.T. Hay with me, uh, the man who was instrumental, really, in Calgary's lone touchdown, inasmuch as he completed that third and ten uh, fake uh, punt. Well, I, that's the first time I can recall you throwing the ball in a game, J.T. Is it the first? Yeah, that's the first time I ever threw the ball in the game. Uh, we had a flex punt, and uh, we had uh, Scott Bissessar about 15 yards out, and uh, heard people yelling from the bench, and then I looked over, and he was wide open, so I uh, just tossed it over there. Is that an option? Now, did you have the option of throwing or kicking? Yeah, we had the option. You could throw our kick. Uh, when we were in the field position, where we were at the, the center field mark. Uh, had it been down deep in our own end, we wouldn't have tried it. You've been working on it, though, in practice, eh? Oh, all year. Coach Jerry Hart's giving me all the tips. 
I want to talk to you about uh, one phase of your arsenal, and that's extra points. If my mathematics are right, JT, you kick 250 in a row. Uh, I'm close. I'm within one if I'm not right, dead on. That, that totally amazes me. Does it ever start to bother you a little, the fact that that string is getting so long? No, I think the only thing that bothered was when you got so close up to the 246 mark, uh, you didn't want to blow it then, but uh, a, lot of the, uh, a lot of the credit has to go to the center and the holders. Uh, they're the ones that him at, uh, were there out before practice and after practice, uh, and it goes back to the days in Ottawa, the centers and holders I had there, and uh, it's always been a compliment for the others on the, on the field, uh, field goal and convert team, and uh, of course, for them, it uh, wouldn't have been possible neither. JT, is it hard to keep up your concentration uh, with the uh, frustrating season you guys have had? Uh, it's you know it's unfortunate that uh, we're out of the playoffs at this point in time, but uh, you know football is a game you got to be ready to play it uh, 16 times a year and for 60 minutes, and uh, we're professionals and we're expected to do it, and uh, we just got to keep plugging away and try and get in winning track for uh, next year's training camp. Well, you're only down seven points. I think this is going to be a very interesting second half. JT, good luck. Thanks, Al. Okay, 17 to 10 is the score here at Taylor Field. And you're reminded that the CFL on CTV will continue in just a moment. Teamwork. The winning element in pairs figure skating. In life, too, working together can make the difference. Crown Life can work with you to smooth out the sudden twists in life's direction. Graduation, starting a job, marriage, a growing family. Crown Life can help make sure every move is a move in the right direction. Crown Life. Secure your future. Look to the crown. Can your motor oil survive the punishment today's engines dish out? Circulating it twice as fast, working it twice as hard, breaking it down and causing it to lose its viscosity. That's why you need an oil with the additive that does more to help prevent viscosity breakdown. Castrol XLR, the oil engineered for today's cars. Look for Castrol XLR at these and other leading retailers. He's a man with a plan. Where are we going? Shopping. She's about to become part of it. I've got a 7.30 advanced karate class. You're not going to make it. From the moment they meet. Are you going to kill me or something? Trust me. The adventure begins. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Where did you learn how to do that? Ray Dawn Chong. I read the instructions. Commando. Start today at a theater near you. Check your local newspaper. This Sunday, the New York Yankees are in Toronto to face the Red Hot Blue Jays. It's top-notch baseball Sunday afternoon on CTV. This is Carling O'Keefe Sports, the CFL this week. Good evening, everyone. At this time last Friday, we were talking about a big trade in the CFL, and we are going to do that again this evening. This time, it is one of the league's senior statesmen on the move. Quarterback Joe Barnes is returning to Montreal. Expendable in Calgary with the Stampeders out of the playoff chase. Barnes looked good to Joe Gallat. I think we started out really well. We started out uh, way ahead of everybody, and uh, we were getting good execution on our offense. And then uh, things suddenly uh, came to a standstill and uh, we just can't let that happen um, we've made some changes I think that are going to help us and I think Joe is the most significant one but uh, we're not asking him to carry the whole ball club I think we got a good ball club our defense is playing solid football uh, we got some solid running backs good receivers what we want Joe to do is just to come in and uh, keep us going you know get us some first downs and uh, give us a chance to win I was labeled the savior in uh in Calgary, but I'll tell uh, tell the people here in Montreal what I told the people in Calgary. I didn't walk on water to get here, so I don't uh, you know classify myself as the savior. So um, I'm just going to come here and try to help this football club out with you know the best that I can to you know to win the Eastern Division and get to the Grey Cup. Uh, I've had a you know a good career here in the CFL, both in uh, you know Montreal when I was here, and then in Saskatchewan and in Toronto. So. Uh, you know, it's, it's a shame that things didn't work out in Calgary, but uh, I guess, you know, everything works out for the best, and I'm happy to be back here in Montreal. Upcoming games in the Canadian Football League tomorrow night. The Edmonton Eskimos are at Iverwind to meet the Tiger Cats. Two big ones Sunday afternoon. The battle for the playoffs continues in Ottawa. The Argonauts are there, and the big game of the weekend. The two top teams in the West meet Sunday afternoon. That game on CTV. The BC Lions visit the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. 
This has been Carling O'Keefe Sports, the CFL this week. The Pacific Western Airlines Stars of the Week is next. This is CTV's Friday Night Football. For seven years, we shared the place kicking duties. Yeah, yeah. Hold it, Steve. I did the holding, Jack did the kicking. Give me a hand. Now we're sharing Miller Lite. It's great right here in Canada. We drink it because it tastes great. No, we drink it because it tastes less filling. Tastes great. Tastes less filling. Tastes great. Oh. Right there. Ah, hold it yourself. <laughs> Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Your GM dealer's 1986 All-Star Kickoff is on. See the great new 86 lineup of cars and trucks. Get in on all the big babies. With special value option packages. Take a test drive. You could win a weekend at the Grey Cup. So get down to your GM dealer's 1986 All-Star Kickoff by October 5th. Make your best deal now. Dozens of new door crashers this weekend at the one and only Sport Check Ski Happening 1986. New door crashers like three of Fisher's hottest top line skis up to $380, $199.97. Two of Rosignol's hottest save over $120, just $249.97. Head 4.0 recreational ski package save over $100, just $249.97 complete. And at Sport Check, tickets for Warren Miller, steep and deep. Shop Sunday noon till 5, check Friday's Journal and Sun. CTV, Television Network. Two, three TV, CFRN, your Major League Baseball station in Edmonton. He was pointing a gun at me, Kevin. I saw it, you saw it. What are we talking about? You said you saw a gun that is good enough for me. Night Heat, weekly on CTV. Defensive star Darnell Clash of BC had two fumble recoveries, an interception, and a 53-yard punt return in the Lions' solid defeat of Saskatchewan. While lineman star James Curry of the Argonauts gave an all-out effort in Toronto's victory over Winnipeg with five individual tackles and two quarterback sacks. Pacific Western Airlines brings you the stars of the week in the CFL. Tonight, CTV Profile looks at offensive star Ricky Turner, quarterback of the Toronto Argonauts. Playing his finest game of the season, Turner rushed for 119 yards and passed for 163 more. His ability to scramble was a key factor in a crucial win for Toronto, his new home. The Canadian hospitality, I feel, has been rather superb. Every family I visit has been extremely nice and treated me as though I was part of the family and not just a visitor. I think my teammates have been really receptive to me. However, there has been some difficult situations where they have given me a hard time just talking about little things, and that's part of being a football team and being one of the guys. I'm sure the guys on the team will remember on his first traveling trip, they teased him a lot because his, his tie was really big, fat at the bottom, so I had to uh, show him around a little bit and help him get some clothes because uh, his clothes were a little out of date. He's uh, a very traditional type of guy. The, the guys on the team are really uh, confident with his abilities. He's learning a lot from Conridge, who's the veteran. And uh, with his running ability, I think uh, they make a good combination together. Conridge um, has a great dimension to our ball club because he is a veteran and he can do so many things well. As compared to myself, I maybe can jump in there as a good relief pitcher and keep up, keep up the momentum. I think the last game, I have to give a lot of credit to my offensive line. They've done a fine job with the explosive rush that Winnipeg, Winnipeg has. And they basically kept the guys out and enabled me to look at the second and third receivers. Ricky does have the quick feet, and he's able to scramble around and get out of precarious situations and uh, I think that's one of his biggest assets but we've got one guy in the cast already we don't need two so as far as running the ball that much it's great that he had a hundred yard game but I tell you what let's use Terry Gear's legs let's use our arms right <laughs> Whether passing to Greer or scrambling into the end zone, Ricky Turner did his part to keep the Argonauts in that tight divisional race in the CFL East. The Stars of the Week profile has been brought to you by Pacific Western Airlines. 
which also brings you the Grey Cup 100 contest. This is CTV's Friday Night Football. Announcing an important step forward in auto service, the Canadian Tire Service Promise. At Canadian Tire, we promise to fix your car right. And it's not right until you're satisfied. The bill you get will never be more than the estimate you approve. We guarantee our work, we guarantee our parts. We promise to do only what's necessary. For auto service that sets new industry standards, the right choice is Canadian Tire. Nothing unexpected, nothing unexplained. We promise. My business has really taken off. Computers are definitely the way to go. But where do I go? Sure, we've got a computer. Who's going to understand this business and the computer business well enough to match us up? Am I making sense? Makes sense to us. We're Computer Innovations. At our stores across Canada, we take care of business every day. Computer Innovations. We guarantee we can take care of yours. Where it all makes sense. This is Rival 10G Superflow Herbicide. The new granular trifluralin from Hertz. It's clay-based, so it runs clean and smooth. Bag into the hopper and onto the ground. It's got a concentrated 10% formulation, too. That means fewer bags to handle. This fall, your best choice in granular trifluralin is Rival 10G Superflow. Rival 10G Superflow from Hertz. War Amps Key Tags. Carl Hilsinger, a former Montreal football great who lost two legs in a tragic car accident, leads a group of young amputees in a ski clinic held in Quebec and run by the War Amps through its child amputee program. Through your donations, our children receive special artificial limbs, education, legal services, counseling, research, and for all children, the Play Safe Safety Program. Your Key Tag donations make it all possible. Let me make your dreams come true on CTV's Thrill of a Lifetime. I'm Doug Paulson, and I'll make your fantasy an entertaining reality. That's our score at halftime here at Taylor Field in Regina. Saskatchewan leading Calgary by seven, and there you see it now in the top of the seventh inning at Exhibition Park in Toronto. The Yankees and the Blue Jays are all tied up at two. Of course, the Blue Jays just need the one victory over the Yankees. Now we want to get back to this football game. We talked off the top of the show, Frank, about Joe Pow Pow not really doing the job for the past month especially, but the first half tonight, he was hot. Well, his stats were great. He just wasn't put in an end zone. We mentioned he had only six touchdown passes in the entire year. He's got two in the first half. He opened up this ball game with a great throw to Ray Elgard, moved the ball all the way down to the 11-yard line, but that drive stalled, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders had to settle for three points, and it looked like the old story once <laughs> again. Did it ever. But a little bit later on, they managed to put it in the end zone, and Joe Pow Pow finds Michael Elarms at the five, and he puts it in for the major. That made it 10 to nothing for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at the end of the first quarter. But then Rick Johnson hit his only touchdown strike in the first 30 minutes. This one to Emmanuel Tolbert. This drive, of course, kept alive by a great play by J.T. Hay to Scott Bissessar out of putting formation. And Zeno, the recent acquisition from the Ottawa Rough Riders, is wide open as Joe Pau Pau rolls to his right, has a lot of time to throw the football. Zeno had five receptions in this drive, and it was capped off by this touchdown strike from Joe Pau Pau. That made it 17-7, and of course the Calgary Stampeders came back and got a field goal just in the dying moments of that first half. So it's a 17-10 football game here after the first 30 minutes. As you take a look at our Chevrolet halftime statistics, you see that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and Joe Papa have passed for over 200 yards, total offense of 226. And it's a seven-point lead for Saskatchewan as we get ready for the third quarter. Calgary will be kicking off to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. As you see, part of the halftime activities here, Saskatchewan Band Week, 1,300 kids on the field. And boy, did they provide some entertainment. Strike up the band. Support your local band was the theme of the halftime show. And of course, they spelled out Rider Pride here at Taylor Field during the halftime ceremonies. And we're just about ready to get back to CFL action as you take a look at Rick Johnson. And he's on the sidelines at the moment because the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will 
have possession of the football following the kickoff and the first play from scrimmage Denny Ferdinand taking the handoff from Joe Pow Pow and he has a gain of about three yards on the play out across the 35 it'll bring up second down and seven for Saskatchewan and Dale the weather has really improved the wind has stopped almost completely and it seems the temperature must be rising it's quite pleasant now Actually, that was a close to a four-yard game for Ferdinand. Second down and six. Pow Pow quickly throwing. Derek Zeno makes the catch and a good tackle by number 15, Ron Hopkins. Zeno trying to make a quick little move on the corner. And Hopkins managed to bring him down. He's very close to a first down. They'll have to have a measurement here. That's Zeno's seventh reception already in this first ball game for the Western Riders. Pau by the way, was 11 for 18 for 201 yards and two touchdowns in that first half. And the big story statistically for the Stampeders was running back Larry Mason, who picked up 75 yards on the ground. Pau Pau now at 208 yards passing tonight. First down, Saskatchewan. The ball at the right 42 and a half yard line. A little counter play to Craig Ellis. He picks his way through the middle of that line and knocks Culpepper. Makes the stop on him. A gain of close to six yards on first down for Craig Ellis. Who's actually playing as a slot back tonight. Chris DeFrance, the all-time leading receiver for Saskatchewan, is out of the ball game. Did not dress because of an Achilles problem. And the Rough Riders have already had two players go down with Achilles tendon injuries this year, and they didn't want to take any chances with DeFrance, so they sat him out for this one. Second down, Denny Ferdinand trying to slip outside. Culpepper cannot make the tackle. First down for Denny Ferdinand as he moves the ball into Calgary Stampeder territory. Richie Hall got over there to finally put the stop on him. Denny Ferdinand running well tonight and hanging on to the football, which is the important thing. The little guy at 160 pounds comes up and stops the big fullback not before he gains a second first down of this drive early in the third quarter Greek night for Joe Pow Pow so far Boy, he's needed a night like this after the month of September Pow Pow sets up the screen goes off the hands of Denny Ferdinand there were three Stampeders right there converging on Ferdinand had he hung on to the football Culpepper Hall and Woodson I don't think he would have gotten very far had he made the catch. But a that's at least chance. the third ball that's been dropped on Joe that should have been caught. Tony Dennis checks in now, replacing Derek Zeno in the offensive lineup for Saskatchewan. I don't think I'd take that Zeno out too often. <laughs> Second and ten. That's for sure. He's hot tonight. Seven catches. One for a touchdown. Well over 100 yards. his head down and dives to about the 45 yard line and he'll be short of the first down by three. Some good moves by Pow Pow to get out of trouble. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Kind of some fancy Dan dancing here by the throwing Samoa. Not known for his running ability. But Joe would just as soon not run with that football. Joe heads off the field now. The punting unit is out there. Jerry McGrath will kick from midfield. Rome and Richie Hall are the return men. Big rush again from the Stampeders. A low kick. Richie Hall inside his own five. And he's tripped up before he gets to the 10-yard line by Glenn Souter, number 27. A 43-yard punt thanks to a couple of good bounces and a seven-yard return. So the Stampeders will be starting deep. Now, we want to remind fans that you can get in on the match and win contest. All you have to do is match the Football Reporters of Canada selections for the 1985 CFL All-Star team. You can win, and this is the Allied Van Lines match and win contest, and ballots will be distributed at these upcoming games in the Canadian Football League, October 25th in Calgary, the 26th in Ottawa, 27th in Toronto. Ballots are also available at CFL team offices and Allied Van Lines offices. Rick Johnson airing this one out. And it is caught by Ray Alexander, even though Terry Irvin had position on him. 
Alexander comes down with the football for a 45-yard gain. He has great height and obviously great hands. Well, Dale, we talked about his great jumping ability as well when he went up in the end zone and almost made a spectacular catch in the second quarter of this ball game. This ball really thrown up in the air by Johnson, and Alexander just takes it away from Terry Irvin. Way up in the air. Big play for the Stamps. Johnson really takes a hit from Al Johns just as he got the ball away. Now we're back to action. Johnson throws, and it goes oh. incomplete. Greg Figure, the intended receiver. Well, he might add a little bit too much on that, but certainly a catchable ball. It'll be second down and 10 for the Stampeders. The ball at their own 54-yard line. I like the look of this young guy. I really do. Boy, he's tough too, Frank. That was a heck of a hit Johns put on him. Making his third start for the Stampeders. Rick Johnson. Of course, he is the quarterback now with the Stampeders after the trade of Joe Barnes to Montreal earlier this week. Second and ten. The blitz is on. And he just unloads it. Nobody there. Absolutely nobody there in the way of an eligible receiver. I think that was Craig Ellis was the intended receiver. It was a screen to the right side, and Saskatchewan just tied him up. I should say Mason. Both wearing number 33, but for different teams. <laughs> so J.T. Hayes back on the field to punt. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter. <laughs> Out of their own end to midfield. They had to punt. Derek Zeno on the run, and the ball came loose. I think the Riders managed to get it back. It bounced between two or three players. And let's see who came up with it. There's Eddie Ray Walker there. It looks like Dave Singh, number 22, a 30 yard punt. And they'll get a three yard return on it. But Zeno mishandles it right from the beginning. And it is Singh who gets the ball for the Riders. They lead by seven. We'll be back in just a moment. You fought for every yard. Let's go. Now there's only one left. There's no second best for you in the game you play or the fear you choose. That's why you just say O.B. for that great taste in here. O.B., O.B., oh yeah. You just say O.B. Score 17-10. We're just in the middle of the third quarter here at Taylor Field. That's Scott Bissessar, 29, who caught that pass from J.T. Hay in the first half to keep a drive alive. You see they're paying a little more attention to him now. First down, Riders from their own 29. Play action fake for Pow Pow. He throws complete out to the 35-yard line to young David Conrad, number 37, the rookie out of Acadia. And he has a gain of six yards, but there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage, and they'll bring it back. The Rough Riders guilty of a legal procedure. Third penalty of the ball game against Saskatchewan, which is actually a very low total for Saskatchewan. They are the most penalized team in the league. Stu Fraser coming in from the bench. Procedure. For the Saskatchewan number 68. First down repeated. Little information after seven innings now we still have a tie in that big baseball game in Toronto. So it's first down and 15 for the Riders. The ball back at their own 24 yard line. Pop ball with the wall action now and reverses his field. Buys himself lots of time and then finds David Conrad wide open. First down, Saskatchewan, as he brings it out across the 40-yard line. A pickup of 18 yards for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And Pow Pow's having himself a good night. Dale, I don't remember any game this year where Joe has had more time to throw the football. 
And in this case, he buys some of that time himself by moving around very adroitly. He has definitely looked as sharp tonight as he did in July, the first month of the season, because uh, in August, when he su was suffering the effects of that leg injury, and then September, when he came back from the injury, he has not been sharp. Uh -oh, looking for Elgard, and he had slipped on the play, and diving, trying to make the interception, was Larry Hogue, number 14. Second down and 10 coming up. Well, Joe is really showing that the faith that Jocko has put in him throughout the year has been justified. No question in Jocko's mind who his number one quarterback is. It's been Joe all along when he's healthy. And it's really strange, uh, too, Dale, isn't it? Because in the preseason, Homer Jordan was considered the number one quarterback prior to his entry. Well, when Jocko signed on as head coach, he said all winter he was going to see Homer Jordan play a lot more. Now we have another flag now. Pow Pow goes to Stu Fraser at the 51 yard line, but I think it's going to be wiped out again. The Rough Riders jumping ahead illegally. You know, Dill, that Jocko has a philosophy that he likes his receivers to be going forward, going in motion downfield because he says, you know, that makes a four or five receiver out of a 5-2 receiver because he's getting a running start at those defensive backs. Offside, Saskatchewan number 11. But as you can see, First it has to be timed out absolutely perfect. Frank, that's an excellent point. Well, I've been watching that particular thing tonight, and I think Saskatchewan actually have got away with a couple of other offsides that weren't called because of that. They've only been working on it since training camp, and they still can't get it right. <laughs> there you see the penalty situation, 1985. Kalpar stepping up again, throwing low to Elarms on second down. And that'll bring on the punting unit for Saskatchewan. It was second and 15. That was one of the few really bad throws by Joe. He was under some pressure and obviously not happy with himself. Eight minutes remain in the third quarter. A very entertaining football game here at Taylor Field with Saskatchewan leading the Stampeders by seven points. Jerry McGrath in to do the putting now with Richie Hall and Tag Rome. Back in near their own 30. And just went a little higher, and Tag Rome on the return is spilled right at the 40-yard line by Ray Elgard. 7.46 left in the third quarter. 17-10. Riders lead the Stampeders. We'll be right back. When did you shave last? Ten minutes ago. Why? I want you to shave again. Why? I bought you a new shaver. I have a shaver. I know. Shave again with this brawn. Here at Cutting, that's brawn, the world's number one foil shaver. It shaves you so close, you can see the stubble you left behind. That's better. For the living, ask us about Freedom 55. The way I see it, our life insurance is going to help us get more out of life. Bud Riley's team hanging in there. They're down by seven here in the third quarter with 7.46 left. Under Bud Riley, the team has a record of two wins and four losses. Interesting quote in the local paper here on Bud Riley today. Uh, a lot of people ask him why he wanted to get back into head coaching ranks. He seemed very happy as doing his scouting job for the Stampeders. And his only answer was once it, that coaching gets in your blood, you just can't get rid of it. Somebody tried to ask him about next year. He says, I'm not talking about right next year, right now. I'm going to talk about the game. Larry Mason. Eddie Lowe finally brings him down at the 43-yard line for gain of four on the play. 42 for Eddie Lowe. Mason does a good job of staying on his feet, but you've mentioned it, Frank. He is a little tentative once he gets across the line of scrimmage. Good job by Fran McDermott. He does an excellent job supporting the run. He, as a matter of fact, leads the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in solo tackles with 40 coming into the ball ballgame. Second down. Five to go. Tag Rome. Nobody was really open that time. He just more or less threw it away, and it's going to bring on the punting unit once more. That was McDermott right back there, defending on the pass that time. There's little Richie Hall. <laughs> what an entertaining guy he is. And one of the real favorites of Jocko, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Every time he's brought up. Got out, of course, can't just say enough about it. 
just mentioned Stan Peters, and right away Jocko starts talking about Richie Hall. Automatic. Good kick. DTA turns it over. This is Derek Zeno on the return. Still on his feet to about the 34 yard line. Culpepper in on the tackle along with Bresciani. An update from Toronto now. They are still tied at two. They're in the middle of the eighth inning. The Yankees and the Blue Jays. Toronto needing just to win one more game to clinch it. And here at Taylor Field, Saskatchewan leading Calgary 17 to 10. With six and a half minutes left in the third quarter. The last punt by Hayes. Travel 40 yards in return of eight. that handoff from Joe Pow Pow and he did that three times in a row last week in Vancouver but that's the first time tonight he's had trouble hanging on to the ball. It'll be a loss on the play. Watch how he has the patience to follow this ball and wait for the big hop to come back to him. Looked like the handoff was all right and it pops right up here. <laughs> he did that on purpose. Maybe play a little basketball. Ferdinand comes out of the ball game. Of course Jocko as you heard before the game so you better hang on to it tonight. Second down and 12. Pop out. And the ball was tipped by Knox Culpepper. He was trying to hit Derek Zeno, curling into the middle. And we'll bring up third down, and we have a kicking contest going on now between these two clubs. Good job by the rookie linebacker, Knox Culpepper. Out of the University of Georgia Bulldogs. We mentioned earlier, a teammate of Don Chumley, 63, who has put two or three really big hits on Joe Pow Pow. Five thirty remaining now in this first quarter. No score. Richie Hall on the return from the 31 yard line. 42 yard line brought down. The score is Saskatchewan 17, Calgary 10. We'll be back in a moment. November 1983, Tandy presents the Model 2000, superior in technology. October 1984, Tandy presents the Model 1200, superior in value. And now, Tandy presents the Model 1000, And no one knows the West like Pacific Western Airlines. We spread our wings across the mountains. With more flights. We spread our wings across the coast. To more places in the West than any other airline. We spread our wings to serve you better. There's a friendly spirit in the West. We spread our wings to be your home. You'll find wherever Pacific Western spreads its wings. We spread our wings across the out over the football now at their own 43-yard line. They trail by seven with a little over five minutes left in the third quarter. Here at Taylor Field, we the draw play to Mason. He slips in the backfield, and Wilburn and a bunch of friends are there to greet him for a loss on the play of about a yard. Dale, I don't know if you were able to notice, but on that last uh, Saskatchewan punt, Mark Ernest did make the long snap, but he is hobbling awfully badly. He's showing uh, to be a gritty young fellow just to go in and do that job. I'm surprised that Jack hasn't replaced him. Well, I think that's all he's doing is snapping on the third down. So yeah, that, that's all he's doing, Frank, but it's it's quite an effort just for him to get on and off the field. Johnson will be picked off for the first time tonight. Grand McDermott. Brought down by Greg Fieger at the Calgary 33-yard line. A return of 31 yards. A badly thrown football, overthrown. McDermott picking off his fourth interception of the year. And you'll see Johnson is quite a bit off the market on this one. It did not look like Emmanuel Tolbert was even looking for the throw to come his way. Well, McDermott puts the Riders in excellent field position at the 33-yard line of the Stampeders. McDermott's fourth interception of the year, as you see. 
So far this year, McDermott has not returned one for a touchdown. And that holds true. It'll be the first time in his four-year career that he's not returned one for a major score. Pow Pow dumps it off to Stu Fraser, and he drops it. Larry Hall providing the coverage. I'm not sure he might have just deflected it enough. Well, we're going to take a good look at it right here. Hogue number 14, the defender. Yeah, just I think he did. It. Just get enough of it that Stu Fraser could not hold on to it. And is Stu Fraser ever a popular uh, rough guy? Everybody cheers when he comes on the field, don't they? Well, sometimes around here, Frank. Uh, <laughs> some of the phone-in shows right? in this town. <laughs> is that right? Don't indicate that. get away from the initial tackler there at the 25 yard line Knox Culpepper so he'll be about a yard short of the first down folks here are hollering of course for the riders to go for it it's going to be about a yard short of the first down it's a little further than was indicated by the runner offensive team the short yardage really team it. is coming in With 323 remaining in the third quarter. You look at Greg Babra now warming up at the Stamp Peter side of the field. Third down, Mitchell. Greg Ellis put his head down and drove for the first down. Good tough running by Craig Ellis that time as he went right into Knox Culpepper and picked up the first down. I'm a little surprised you would have thought they'd give the ball to Danny Ferdinand, but a little more size but boy what a great second effort by Craig Ellis they are going to measure and I'm sure he did pick up that first down driving into the linebacker of the Stampede. I just want to remind you of the CFL facts figures and records publication everything you want to know about the CFL the players stats it's all there, conveniently available at Better Bookstores, as well as the CFL team offices, or you can write to the CFL 1200 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario. How proud is Stu Fraser? And again, I think Larry Holt may have touched it. Well, I'm telling you something, Joe is getting a lot of time to throw that football. Watch Neil Quilter, the offensive right guard. He comes out to provide protection for his quarterback. He has to turn back to try to even find anybody. There's just no pressure on Joe. Watch Quinter 65. Finally gets a piece of Bernie Morrison, but Joe, a lot of time to throw it. So it's second down and 10. Oh, oh, it's a straight drop, throwing quickly. And over the head of Stu Fraser. So that will bring up third down. Freddie Fleming, our ISO director, says that Zeno, Derek Zeno, who's had an outstanding night, is, is open at almost every play. Let's take a look at it. Ooh. Well, if you'd have seen him, that might have been six. Well, Mel Jenkins left him after he saw the ball released from Joe Palpa. Okay, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Ron Chumley, the injured Stampeder, should holding be called only when it directly affects the play. That's our question for tonight and numbers to call. Freddie, Freddie. Well, Dale, we got a big one on Sunday. We go from here over to Winnipeg for showdown number one, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the BC Lions. A must game for Winnipeg if they hope to finish in first place. Third down for the Riders, a 29-yard field goal attempt coming up by Dave Ridgeway. Stu Fraser will do the holding. The kick is good, so it is now a 10-point lead for Saskatchewan with 223 remaining in the third quarter. Ridgeway two for two now. Next 
week in the Canadian Football League. Of course, the big Friday night rematch out at BC Place in Vancouver between the Bombers and Lions. Followed on Saturday by Montreal playing at Edmonton. And then on Monday, Thanksgiving Day, a pair of games in the Canadian Football League. Toronto at Calgary. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are playing in Hamilton. That's all next week. CFL. Rick Johnson going deep for Alexander. And with him all the way is Terry Irvin. And Alexander can get up in the air a long way, can he? He's got some good speed, but I think he jumped just a touch early on that one as you take a look at Chumley hurt on the sideline. But it looked like he went up in the air just a little bit too quickly. And while you're watching that, Frank, I'll just give you an update from Toronto. It is now 3-2 Blue Jays, bottom of the eighth inning. Right. If they hold on, that's it. And if they hold on, we'll be going to the celebration a little bit later. So, a little ways to go on that one. Blue Jays batting, bottom of the eighth, lead by one. Second down from the 35-yard line. To Rick Johnson sets up the screen to Greg Cooper. They defense it well and stop him after a gain of only four yards, so the Stampeders will have to punt the football. Terry Irvin making the play defensively for Saskatchewan. Figure just trying to slip out to the flat on it. Screen pass. Been a pretty consistent receiver this year for the Stampeders. Had 36 catches coming into tonight's ball game. But that one comes up short. There's that score we just told you about. Blue Jays hang on and win. We will go to Toronto for a report on the Blue Jays' celebration of clinching the Eastern Division title. Hey, Jim Fields moves up quickly and draws a no-yards penalty against the Calgary Stampeders. Not much question about that one. The attendance tonight, 19,700, and that makes it the smallest crowd of the year. Still not too bad, Dale. Not too bad considering a chilly night and... Uh, two teams out of the playoffs. I think the Saskatchewan fans should be congratulated. Here we are. Calgary oh. number 96. First down. By the way, I just Don Chumley, who came out injured a moment ago, was like watching a racing car at the Indy 500. They uh, took his ankle and checked it and retaped it, and he's back in. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick change, <laughs> yeah. Pit stop, right? He turned to try to go outside, and Mel Jenkins played it perfectly. Number 28 was there to make the tackle. They'll give him a forward point of progress near the Calgary 50-yard line, which is a gain of close to seven. But a, a good play by Jenkins to prevent it from going any farther. It really was. A good offensive play and a good defensive play. Alarms tried to make a good move on him. Alarms, of course, got a touchdown from Joe Papa in the first half of this ballgame. We're down to the final minute now of the... Third well, a big roar from the crowd, or a lot of the crowd anyway, is for the Blue Jays score that we gave to you a few moments ago. Oh, Ray Elgard was open, but Ron Hopkins, I think, deflected the ball away from him. Well, the Calgary defenders have been getting to the ball just at the last moment on several occasions. You saw Larry Hogue knock down a couple in this quarter. I think if Joe led him a little more, he might have completed that one. There is an injured Stan Peter, I believe it's Richie Hall. Oh no, yeah, it is Richie Hall. Pat Clayton, trainer, talking to him. That was Hall coming on the halfback blitz, and he put a hit on Joe Powell. And Hall is the injured ball player. It's like his side or his hip is. The injury. Speaking of injuries, Roger Aldag, uh, the veteran Saskatchewan Rough Riders, playing in some pain. He split his finger, and they have uh, splinted it, and he is back in the ball game. Take a look at once again Richie Hall coming in there, getting a shot on Pow Pow. He come down hard on the his hand, immediately goes to his right hip. Probably a hip pointer injury. And a hip pointer can be a very, very painful injury, although certainly not serious. There's one Stampeder fan in the audience tonight. JTA fan. He 
he's all right. Little offensive picture is just about how the score is. This is Captain Lee by 10. In return, he gets to the 10 yard line. That was a low line drive spiral by Jerry McGrath that kind of fluttered a little bit and fooled Hopkins and made him back up and take it on the hop. 48 yard punt and a return of eight. After eight complete now, it's the Jays three, the Yankees two. Three more outs to go for the Blue Jays, and they will be American League East Division champions. Dale, it sounds like the time for Tom Hankey. That, right, yeah, you bet. Throw smoke now. And that is the end of the third quarter, or this will be the end of the third quarter. At the 10-yard line, the Stampeders, first and 10. Watson <laughs> puts it up. What a catch by Tag Rome. First down, Stan Peters. They quickly move out to the 37-yard line. A pickup of 27 yards, 20 to 10. Saskatchewan leads Calgary. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. They're easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret... It's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. One day only. Tomorrow is the day to buy mink. Up to 70% off. This is it. Kasky's entire collection of mink coats and jackets at savings of 50 to 70% off. This is the perfect time to save. Come early and take advantage of the incredible savings. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Kasky Fabulous Furs, 10356 Jasper Avenue. Just a great catch on the last play of the third quarter by Tag Rome, getting the Stampeders out of trouble. We're back now to start the fourth quarter, and the Stampeders are first and ten at their own 35-yard line. And now let's see what we've got here. Dan Runs went across the line of scrimmage. Rick Johnson waited for him to get back, and then Jitter Fields made the move to go and make contact with the player. But I, I, I think that has to be against the Saskatchewan. So, sure, because uh, he went across the line of scrimmage to get it, Runge. Sure, Runge was back on side before the ball was snapped. There's going to be a bit of a discussion about this one. They're going to march it off against the Riders. Five yards for being offside as you take a look at our Chevrolet three-quarter stats. Offside, Saskatchewan, first down with Peter. Very even in total offense, as you can see, but a 10-point lead by the Rump Riders. Well, no, you couldn't really call runs for drawing him offside because no. he'd gotten back. And he had to make it. contact with uh, runs before he got back onside. He didn't do that. Johnson zings this one over the head of the intended receiver, Ray Alexander, and the defender, Terry Irvin. Let's go to Al. Well, Dale, there's popular Richie Hall. Uh, on that hit uh, that he made a minute ago, uh, he hit him so hard, apparently, he had a hip spasm. It wasn't a hip pointer injury. He had some pain, and when he came to the bench, Pat uh, Clayton, the, the physical, uh, the trainer of the football team, gave him what he calls uh, spasm release, whatever that is. And uh, Richie said he feels fine now. Johnson goes to the other side this time to tag Rome right at the 50-yard line. And it should be a first down. It is for the Calgary Stampeders. It's a second and five. And he picks up about eight right at the 50-yard line. We're just into the fourth quarter, and the Stampeders trail by 10. is on Johnson and he just unloads in a hurry. Jim Hunter, number 52, right on Boy, top of him. There's been an awful lot of 
receivers slipping tonight when they're making their cuts. Alexander just slipped on the previous play, and Tag Rome slips on this one. Watch him. Just when he tries to make his cut. That turf is not in great shape. It is really matted down. It's very thin, isn't it? And thin and hard. It's second and ten for the Stampeders at their own 50. They call the draw. Mason is stopped right there by Gary Lewis, number 79, playing his first ball game for Saskatchewan. And he's having a big one. And he forces the Stampeders to punt the football away. Gary Lewis acquired from Ottawa in that big six-player trade not quite two weeks ago. Had two sacks in the first half of this ball game. Fields and Zeno drop back. Awaiting the punt from J.T. Hay. And he kicks it low. Zeno, 15 yards. Right at the 20 for a return of five. A 42 yard punt and a five yard return. Saskatchewan leads by 10. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action in a moment. It's a two man space van Chevy Astro people mover. Four seat real neat Chevy Astro people mover. Five place to the race Chevy Astro people mover. What a way to go. It's seven gals golf pal Chevy Astro people mover. Eight makes feeling great Chevy Astro people mover. V6 country slick Chevy Astro people mover. What a way to go. It's the high tech captain's deck Chevy Astro people mover. Great going trailer going Chevy Astro people mover. That's the Chevy way to go. Announcing an important step forward in auto service, the Canadian Tire Service Promise. At Canadian Tire, we promise to fix your car right. And it's not right until you're satisfied. The bill you get will never be more than the estimate you approve. We guarantee our work. We guarantee our parts. We promise to do only what's necessary. For auto service that sets new industry standards, the right choice is Canadian Tire. Nothing unexpected, nothing unexplained. We promise. Saskatchewan leading Calgary 20 to 10 here in the fourth quarter at Taylor Field in Regina. It is now 3-3 in the top of the ninth in Toronto. Butch Weininger has just hit a home run with two out for the Yankees in the top of the ninth. They are tied at three and a little bit of rain again. A pouring rain. Uh-oh. It's been delayed? Not yet. They're still playing. First down Saskatchewan. The ball at the rider 20-yard line. stopped at about the 26 for a gain of six yards. Culpepper in on the tackle for the Stampeders. Stampeders blitzing quite a bit now on first down and Paul Paul calls a good play for that situation. Tony Dennis number 88 is into the ball game and a Blue Jays fan attending a Rough Rider game. Second down and four. Step is to Craig Ellis. He's got a first down out across the 30-yard line. Craig Ellis leading the Canadian Football League in touchdowns with 13 of them coming into the night. And he also leads it in rushing touchdowns. Ten of his 13 have been on the ground. First and ten from the lead. Quickly throws to Michael Williams. Makes a good move down the sidelines. He stepped out of bounds at the 42-yard line. He should have another first down. Well, that put Papa up around the 260-yard mark throwing the football. He's averaged over 300 yards this year. Arms making a good move there on L. Jenkins, 28. Two good moves. <laughs> the second one got right around him. His right foot just touched a very faint sideline all over there in front of the Stampede bench. But the referee was right on top of the play, and it is a first down Saskatchewan. The ball at their own 42-yard line. Craig Ellis trying to get around the corner, goes out of bounds with it. Forced out by Mel Jenkins. The pickup is 
six or seven on the play. Riders now going to more or less a, a control type of offense, running the ball a little bit more, and Will Powell Powell throwing it short, and not taking any chances, is putting together a pretty impressive drive here. Game is six, second down and four from the 48. And he'll be short of the first down. Once again, our question tonight, should holding be called only when it directly affects the play? And the numbers to call, 50 cent service charge per call, and we'll give you the results of that at the conclusion of tonight's ball game. We have 10-17 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Riders will be third and a yard. And they will gamble at their own 51-yard line. They need only a, about two feet. Last time they ran Craig Ellis in this situation. Popov keeps himself. Stan Peters, Bernie Morrison says they stopped him. But we'll have a measurement. It's going to be pretty doggone close, though, but I think he did make it. Just made it. But of course, all it takes is any part of the football. Joe is really stacked up there. You know, from that angle, it looked like he gained yeah. more than a couple of feet, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. He got pulled back a little bit, too. So with 9.44 remaining, the Rough Riders keep this drive going. About a yard, maybe two. Woodson in on the tackle along with Hold. This is an interesting block attempt by Roger Aldag. Watching number 44 as he comes out. He's blocking on Bernie Morrison, 72, and he tries to hook him to the inside. A very difficult block for an offensive guard. Good penetration, actually, by Morrison as Ellis is forced to go back, and the gain is limited to just a yard. Good defensive play. down by Larry Hogue, first and 10 Saskatchewan at the Calgary 41 to pick up a 16 yards. You know, Dale has not been a big factor in this ball game since very early on when he gained 29 yards to set up the opening field goal for the Saskatchewan Riders. And it was about five or six games into the season when Elgart was held to less than 100 yards in any game. What an outstanding start he had in 1985. Got turned up field, gets inside the 40-yard line for pickup of a couple. Hey, Joe, don't run that play no more. They give him close to three, so second down and a long seven for the Rough Riders, and we, we have eight minutes left. We talked about Ellis's primary asset being a receiver. Coming into the nice ball game, he'd rushed 115 times, but he only averaged 3.1 yards. It's not been the breakaway back that they expected, but an excellent receiver. Leads the league and catches. Stuart Fraser makes the catch. Tackled immediately by Larry Hogg and short of the first down by a couple of yards. See, there's that Stu Fraser cheering section. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't suggesting that fans here in the ballpark get on Stu, but there are some around town that really figure, especially as a return guy, should have been back there. He doesn't have that blinding speed. No, he sure doesn't. Second, it's third down and two yards to go for the Riders. I think they're going to send Ridgeway in there, attempt a 40-yard field goal. 7-14 remains now. <laughs> and he'll try to give the Riders a 13-point lead. Fraser will hold. Kick by Ridgeway. It is wide 
to the right and gets a single point out of it. So it is now Saskatchewan 21 and Calgary 10. The 6.56 left. And we'll be right back. I work the CP railway line. I go where the steel rail guides me. I'm bound to haul a heavy load. Railway never sleeps. It's, we're always there doing our job, and uh, you know we're a big company, but you're, you're just never too big to hustle, and that's what we do. The job isn't nine to five. Not if you're really interested in your customer. You want him to stop working at five o'clock. I work to see the railway line. I had a guy ask me, "How can you stand going to work in the middle of the night?" And I, I can't really answer that because I don't think anybody would really want to go to work in the middle of the night, but. Uh, Subconsciously, you have an obligation to fill. That's railroading. Now, where would this country be without the railroad to start with? CP Rail. CP Rail, helping Canada move forward. Canada Savings Bonds brings you a few moments to contemplate your future. For the return. For the security, for the cash ability, Canada Savings Bonds. Your plan for the future. Available for a limited time starting October 23rd. Well, it might be the smallest crowd of the season at Taylor Field, 19,700, but as you can see, some of them are having a great time with the Rough Riders in front by 11 with Johnson going deep and knocked away by Eddie Ray Walker. Intended for tag Rome at the Saskatchewan 30-yard line. The Stampeders first down at their own 35. Johnson is showing that he can put that ball in the air a long way, but great coverage all the way by Eddie Ray Walker. Well, Rome made an outstanding catch on the final play of the third quarter, but no way as Eddie Ray Walker was right there. And of the last five passes that Johnson has attempted, four of them have been to tag Rome. Second down and ten. Six and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. The draw, the Mason. Stopped at the 40. A gain of five. Eddie Lowe made the tackle. It'll be third and five, and on comes the punting unit. They've called that draw play on second and long previously tonight, and it has worked for them a couple of times. But on this occasion, they come up five yards short. Eddie Lowe would have nothing to do with that. Former University of Alabama star, played under Bear Bryant. Keep up with a big defensive play right there. JT Hay threw out a punt formation in the first half. And he kicks this one away, and this will be Derek Zeno. Zeno down at the 26 yard line by Rob Bresciani, number 11. 47-yard punt, three-yard return. Riders lead 21-10. We'll be right back. Everybody said stick'em was the key to my football success. But if I could touch it, I could catch it. Stick'em or no stick'em. Like I was one of the first to catch on that Miller Lite is brewed right here in Canada. Light tastes great, and it tastes less filling. So if you're like me, when something great comes along, you stick to it. I mean, with it. Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Innovative, sophisticated two-door coupes, new four-door sedans. Ride the wings of excitement. Pontiac Grand Am. Just over six minutes left. Riders lead the Stampeders by 11. And following tonight's game, the Carlingo Keep Sports Game Stars will receive a Royal Canadian Mint one-ounce gold coin presented by Tilly, Canadian manufacturers of fine leather goods. At Tilly, they bring together quality and creativity in all their products, from their line of personal leather goods through to their travel wear. 
First down for Saskatchewan. The ball at the Ryder 27. The draw play. David Conrad, 30-yard line, a gain of three yards. Five minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the ball game. Clock is running. Derek Zeno comes back in as a wide receiver, replacing Tony Dennis. Second and seven riders. catch at the rider bench what an outstanding catch even though it will not count you know did everything he could to keep his feet in bounds and still make the reception the ball just about a foot too far for him to do that but showed great athletic ability the Yankees have gone in front four to three in the top of the ninth inning and the Blue Jays Lloyd Mosby with an error on the play allowing a Yankee run to score that's quite a turnaround. Ooh. Late stages. Richie Hall. To the Saskatchewan 32-yard line. There's a flag down, but it was because the Riders did not give him enough yards in fielding the punt. A 30-yard punt and a 28-yard return. Well, there's one guy that can come up with the big plays consistently for you in the Stampeder uniform. It's that little guy, Richie Hall. Decline. First down. No yard. Penalty declined. They take the 28-yard return. First down for the Stampeders near the Saskatchewan 32. 21 to 10 is the score in favor of the Riders. Stamps need to put this one in the end zone. Play is broken up by Terry Irvin. Pass intended for Ray Alexander. Well, just an excellent play by the nine-year veteran of the Canadian Football League, Terry Irvin. Of course, used to wear the red and white of the Stampeders. That is really a good, good defense. Alexander coming back toward the football. Terry Irvin had an interception tonight, wiped out due to a penalty. He has five on the season, given 50 in his career. He is the act leading active player as far as interception goes. And don't forget, CTV Sunday afternoon, showdown number one, BC Lions visit the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, which should be one of the best matches we've had all year long. Willard Reeves, the leading rusher in the Canadian Football League. Last year's Shenley Award winner and the much maligned Roy DeWaltz got his ball club at 10 and 1, and he's under heavy criticism from his own <laughs> hometown fan. Unbelievable. He leads the league in touchdown passes. What a matchup and we'll has, have for you. And has less than half the interceptions of any of the other leading quarterbacks in the Canadian Football League. A must situation for the Bombers if they want to finish first. Four o'clock start Eastern time right here on CTV. Sunday afternoon, the Bombers and the Lions. Right now, it's the Stan Peters looking at second and ten from the Saskatchewan 32-yard line. Rick Johnson. Blocked by Rick Moore at the 40-yard line. The ball came loose, but they're going to rule it Calgary's football. Another big sack by that Rough Rider front four. And Rick Moore, I think, has now got two. Gary Lewis had two earlier. Lewis has actually got three. Well, you'll see the pressure coming in on Johnson as he just gets ready to throw that football. Yeah, that really did look like a fumble yep. to me. It did come loose as soon as Rick Moore hit him. I think the Stampeders are going to gamble here on third and about 18 to go. From the Saskatchewan 40, third down. Johnson to Greg Fieger, the reverse to Ray Alexander. Get him! Alexander's got a first down. He fumbles the ball. Saskatchewan has got it. What a beautifully executed play, and unfortunately for the Stampeders, it ended with a fumble. The Stampeders are a little upset. They're saying that the, ground, the ball did not come loose till Alexander hit the ground. 
Just an excellent play by the stamp, showing a little innovation there. Well, I don't know. They, you know, they could be right. I think maybe the contact with the ground did cause the fumble, but that's not the way the officials saw it. Let's take a look at it again. Greg Figure making the reception and that wall being set up for Alexander. Al John's got a piece of him. All of a sudden, the big turnover as it looked like the Stampeders might be in excellent scoring position. Craig, did you see the official on that play? It looked like he was in the middle of a traffic jam. Well, that was a very, very unusual play by the Stampeders, and it looked successful. Paul Paul lost about half a yard on first down, second, and a little bit more than 10 to go. Stu Fraser, he's got him up near first down territory, but he'll be a bit short at the 23-yard line, and that'll bring on the punting unit. We have 2.43 remaining in the football game, and the catch by Stu Fraser is short of first down yardage, so the score is Saskatchewan 21, and Calgary 10, and we'll be back in just a moment. Why did Mohawk name their new unleaded fuel E? It's on now through this weekend only at all brick locations. From tonight's game and great prizes. Bud Riley's team trailing by 11 points with just 243 remaining in the ball game. And the Saskatchewan Rough Riders looking at third down and one, and the punting unit is out there. Richie Hall, tag Rome, back deep. Jack Goda looks on, just hoping nothing goes wrong from here on in. Find a snap, a five-game losing streak. Tied with Calvary for the longest losing streak of the season. Good punt by McGrath. Richie Hall. 45-yard line, and Hall is dropped by Scott Reddle at about the 52. So the Stampeders take over, good field position on their side of midfield, a 41-yard punt and a return of seven. Talking about current streaks, the BC Lions for the second time this year are a five-game winning streak. Edmonton Eskimos have ranked four in a row. Hamilton has been winners the last three times out. Toronto and Ottawa, of course, won last week. Winnipeg lost last week after winning seven in a row. Calgary's lost two in a row. Montreal three straight losses. And the sketch, as I mentioned, has lost five in a row coming into the night. Johnson waving Alexander deep and threw it too high. He got one arm on it, and then Dave Singh made contact with him, broke the play up. It'll be second down and ten. Oh, this guy just shows great hands, though, doesn't he? I think he'd have made this catch had he not been knocked in the back just after making contact with the ball with an outstretched left hand. He's going to be a great receiver in the Canadian Football League. Not a bad night at all for Rick Johnson. Quarterback draw by Rick Johnson, and he's got a first down. Good call by Stan Peters. He's inside the Saskatchewan 45-yard line, a pickup of 15. Draw's been a very successful play for the Stan Peters throughout this ball game on almost every occasion. Stan Peters have now rushed for 106 yards tonight. Here's Johnson looking to throw to Larry Mason. 40-yard line by Fran McDermott, helped out by Dave Singh and Jim Hunter. The gain is four yards. Two minutes left, second down and six Stampeders from the Saskatchewan 40. Time they gambled on third down, they picked it up. Third down, six yards to go. Dale and Frank is under fumble. Uh, Dale out. and Frank, I just wanted to mention something we I think haven't mentioned yet. We're looking forward to that big game Sunday. We'll certainly miss Cal Murphy on the Winnipeg bench. We hope Cal's doing well and will be out of the hospital soon. Certainly second that out. Third down play 
save for the Stampeders. Lots of time for Johnson, and it is picked off by Fran McDermott, his second interception of the ball game. Just perfect timing by the veteran Fran McDermott. Had three interceptions going into tonight's ball game, and that, as you saw, was his second. Just waited a little bit too long to release his football. Tag Rome was open momentarily. But that should do it now for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And they'll end their five-game losing streak with 140 remaining. They're ahead 21-10. Bernie Morrison wraps him up as he crosses the 25-yard line to about the 26-27. Final score now tonight. The New York Yankees have defeated the Toronto Blue Jays 4-3. So the Blue Jays' magic number remains still the same, but the lead now is cut to two games. And they will play tomorrow, and that'll be on the CTV network starting at 1.30 Eastern time and Sunday's game as well, 1.30 Eastern time. 4-3, Yankees win tonight. Pow pow. Down Saskatchewan as Zeno gets to a 43-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, it's lucky they got to him quick. He's got blinding speed. 16-yard gain. Zeno was timed at 4.49 in the 40-yard dash, which would make him the fastest of any of the Rough Riders. Joe Pow Pow has now passed for over 300 yards tonight. Just an average day for the throwing Samoan this year. The key tonight, though, is two touchdown passes. And no interception. Mm -hmm. Mind you, tomorrow that uh, CTV's Wide World of Sports features the lineup includes Carlsberg Light Grand Prix of Cycling and the Hiram Walker Bowling Championships for Women, Canadian Precision Skating Championships, that's novice competition, and highlights from the Universiad in Kobe, Japan. And that's be from the second week of competition. And that'll include track and field, volleyball, and diving. All of that tomorrow on CTV's Wide World of Sports. David Lees, our stats man, says Joe Popow just one yard short of his passing average for the year. As you're looking at Rick Johnson, but Popow is thrown for an average of 308. He's got 307 unofficially tonight. Minute 12 remaining in the ball game. First down for the Riders. The ball at their own 43-yard line. Greg Ellis up the middle across the 50 to about the 52-yard line. He's got about a nine-yard gain. Hogue and Chumley in on the tackle. Second down and short for the Riders. I can't see. How you doing? Veteran Bob Foley. Don't forget to pick me up, Ed. Thanks. Stamps heading home on a charter after this ball game. And we're off to Winnipeg for the big one Sunday afternoon. for a gain of 20. Well, that'll certainly do it, if there was any question in your mind. 45 seconds left. And the Riders have now picked up 111 yards rushing tonight. And there's a look at the Western Division standings now, and that's updated, including Saskatchewan's win here tonight. They're now at 5 and 8. is to the 30-yard line for a gain of nine yards. Culpepper again in on the tackle. And Saskatchewan will keep their ever so thin hopes of a playoff spot alive. And they'll be hoping and praying that Hamilton might knock off Edmonton tomorrow night. Of course, if the Eskimos win, it's all over for Saskatchewan. It's been a good football game. 21-10, the Riders leading. Ellis, a little 
little bit of a hesitation there. There isn't much room to go, and he'll stop right at the 30-yard line with just two seconds remaining. So it'll be third down now for the Riders. And they'll be able to just kill the clock and end this football game. And end the five-game losing streak. The month of September was disastrous for Saskatchewan. They lost to Winnipeg, and Montreal, and Edmonton. Winnipeg again, and then BC last weekend. This is it, the final play of the ball game. Popov grounds it, and he'll keep that football. He passed for over 300 yards tonight, and two touchdowns, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders defeat the Calgary Stampeders 21-10. They're their fifth win of the season, and the second time this year they have defeated the Stampeders. Deal, I thought it was one of the sharpest performances by Joe Popov that we've seen in quite some time. He, of course, had a, a brilliant start early in the year. The first five or six games, he was easily the leader in the Canadian Football League in the passing categories. He had some problems in September, and that was part of the reason they couldn't win a football game. But, boy, he came right back today and just looked as sharp as he possibly could. I think Al McCann has got the winningest coach down there, but let's take a look. First of all, our, our poll, should holding be called only when it directly affects play? Apparently, folks think that's the way it should be. Let's go down to Al now with Jack Gotta. Well, okay, Frank, I've got Jack with me now. Uh, Coach, congratulations. I know it was a long dry spell through September. Must feel good to win one. Your team played well. I don't think there's any doubt. It was good to come back home. We you know we've been on the road for the last couple of weeks and got pounded. And I felt good to come back home and win, you know, win at Taylor Field. And uh, something we're trying to establish anyway is win at home again, you know, and then take our chances when we go on the road. I wanted to say something with the big series coming up between uh, BC and Winnipeg. And, and I just wish that Cal Murphy, you know, I just want to wish him best and, and get him back on the sidelines. We need guys like that back on the sidelines. And, I'd, and uh, I know Donnie Matthews had also been ill a little bit, and I know he's healthy and everything like that. But this is a big lift for our team. I'll tell you, it is, and I thought Joe Powell came through in fine fashion for you, as did your Ottawa connection, the new guys. I thought, <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought Lewis and Zeno played great. Oh, no, they were really good football players. They gave us a lift, you know, and I thought that was a good move on our part, and I'm certain that the, the players that went down to Ottawa and have enhanced their program also, that's a good trade for, for both clubs. But we feel good. And we had a little sign on our wall that says, let's go for it, like four, you know, F-O-U-R. So we got three more games, and we're hoping that we can grab every one of them. That's that's the way we're looking at things. Jack, I know it's a long shot. You kept the mathematical <laughs> candle burning, as did the Yankees tonight. So uh, you never do know in this crazy sport. All you oh, yeah. got to do is keep giving no, it your no. best shot. It was a great night for football. Thanks. It so. turned out to be a nice one. Get to your team. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, coming up, the Carling O'Keefe game stars right after this. November 1983, Tandy presents the Model 2000, superior in technology. October 1984, Tandy presents the Model 1200, superior in value. And now, Tandy presents the Model 1000, superior in With every purchase, scratch and win up to $50 cold cash for a warm home. This fall, everybody wins with Styrofoam SM brand insulation. See your participating dealer. And there's how it ended. 21 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and 10 for the Calgary Stampeders here at Taylor Field. And I think you could very well say uh, the Ottawa Connection were a big factor in the game. Just 10 days ago, these two young athletes joined the Saskatchewan Rough Riders from the Eastern Ottawa Rough Riders. And what a job they did in becoming the offensive and defensive stars of our game. First on my right, the offensive star, wide receiver Derek Zeno. Eight receptions for a touchdown, a flock of yards, and Derek, quite a debut in Saskatchewan. Congratulations. Thank you, but uh, like I said, I'd like to uh, dedicate this game to all the handicapped people. I want to thank God for making this all possible. I guess it is kind of tough to come into a team, Derek, and in such a short time have to adapt to a new system, eh? Oh, definitely, because, uh, like I said, I like it here, and uh, I found me a new home, and uh, I was a little upset because I left Ottawa, but I don't have many... Uh, no type of, uh, you know, contradictions or nothing like that. But like I said, I'm glad that I can contribute to the team. It's a professional business. You've got to be prepared for these kind of things and, and adapt. But I'll bet you it meant lots of films, eh? Oh, definitely, definitely a lot. But uh, like I said, I came in mentally prepared, you know, and uh, I prayed every night to God that uh, I hope I can, you know, get through this. 
is it tough to, uh, the biggest, I guess, changeover, besides learning the, learning the new offensive system, is adapting to a new quarterback? Oh, well, definitely. But, Joe, he's a good quarterback. But, like I say, uh, uh, I wouldn't mind playing outside because that's what I was playing at, uh, at Central State University. Derek, I want to congratulate you again on an outstanding game. Continued success with Saskatchewan. Well, thanks. I like, I like to say uh, hello to Boo and Tim and everybody in Ottawa and my mom and dad. Okay, Derek. Right. Let's move over to the defensive side of the ball now. Another guy only had 10 days to prepare, Gary Lewis. Great job at defensive tackle. Gary, I calculated three sacks and probably a whole flock of presses tonight. Good job. All right, thank you, Al. You know, I'm glad to be here, and I guess it really showed out there on the field today. It was it cold out there? It was cold, I thought, when the game started, but it seemed to get warmer. It did. You know, once you get out there and get the running around and the drilling against the floor, and, you know, you don't worry about the, the weather or the temperature or anything like that. Do you have to kind of psych yourself up a little different when, when you're with a team that's got very little chance of making the playoffs? Do you have to start thinking a little differently? No, not, not really. I don't because every game I go out, I want to go out and be intense. And, you know, that's the way I've been playing the game, you know, so far. And so it's just natural for me to come out and be psyched up and be intent and ready to play. Playing an aggressive position like you do on the defensive line, is it a little easier for you to change teams and adapt to a new system? Yes, it, it was because... Uh, the defenses here were similar to the ones in Ottawa, except uh, the, the ones here are on flip-flopping sides, and uh, that was about the big difference right there. Have you had a chance to make the uh, transition from a standpoint of getting a place to live and everything? Uh, yes, you know, I hate, you know, one thing, I, I hate moving, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'm happy to be here, and, uh, and I'm just on and play here and uh, hopefully do better. You got it off to a great start, Gary. Congratulations. All right, thank Continued you. Continued success. All right, Al. Gary Lewis and Derek Zeno are stars of the game. And uh, the final score, 21-10 to 10 for Saskatchewan. We'll be back with more right after this. CTV's Wide World of Sports lets you take command of the most thrilling and exciting sports events available on television. CTV's smooth, responsive coverage of action-packed sports events worldwide will not only entertain and amaze you, it will give you the real feel for each unique sport. And with our expert commentators, you won't miss out on one second of the action. Make CTV's Wide World of Sports a part of your Saturday afternoon schedule. It's more than a tradition. Check it out. New to CTV this fall. Saskatchewan 21 and Calgary 10, the final score here tonight at Tedder Field in Regina. And for the Rough Riders, of course, the end of a five-game losing streak. But before we talk about some of the highlights of tonight's ball game, let's take a look at the Chevrolet statistics for the full four quarters tonight. And you see where the Rough Riders and the Stampeders both had some offensive yardage tonight. Well, Dale, it was another big night, as we talked about throughout the ball game for Joe Popow. 307 yards, just about the average that he's been throwing the football for this year. I didn't really think that Rick Johnson had a bad football game either, although they, he did throw a couple of interceptions that hurt the Stampeders rather badly. And, of course, Fran McDermott got two of those interceptions late in the ball game, and uh, that really uh, kind of settled things for Saskatchewan by coming up with the turnovers. Yeah, let's take a look at the first one that uh, Fran McDermott picked off. The ball was just badly thrown. One of the few really bad throws that Johnson had in this football game. That put the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders in a position where they missed a field goal and went ahead... 21 to 10 but then it looked like Richie Hall might bring the Calgary Stampeders right back into this ball game a 28 yard punt return right up the middle and it set up the Calgary Stampeders in excellent field position and of course with Richie Hall in the lineup and returning punts uh, he can do a lot of things for you and he's an exciting little guy and got great field position for the Stampeders and watch this one this was really an exciting play first of all the pass to Greg Figure. He laterals the football, obviously a planned play to Alexander. See the wall that's set up there? One of the officials kind of got in Alexander's way. He actually picked up better than the 12 yards which was required on the third down play, but then fumbled away the football. And that really, I think, killed any chance that the Calgary Stampeders had at that point in time. They looked like they might go in and score at that point and come within four points of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. But it wasn't to be for the Calgary Stampeders tonight, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders hang on for the 21-10 victory. And, of course, it's their fifth win of the season. Now, tomorrow in the CFL, it's Matt Dunnigan and the Eskimos against Ken Hobart and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. A couple of hot teams. Edmonton's won four in a row, and, of course, Hamilton three in a row. But on Sunday, 
the one everybody's been talking about, the BC Lions and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers go at it at Winnipeg Stadium. The Lions at 10 and 1, the Bombers at 9 and 3. You'll see the CFL's rushing leader in Willard Reeves leading the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And of course, they can score a lot of points, as do the BC Lions, with quarterback Roy DeWalt leading the CFL in touchdown passes. And of course, his main man is Mervyn Fernandez. And two great defensive football teams that showdown number one Sunday on CTV. The final score is Saskatchewan 21. Calgary 10 CTV's Friday Night Football will continue in a moment. CTV's Dennis McIntosh. The Middle East remains the most dangerous region in the world, where in three countries, regular armies are fighting, and in Lebanon, daily, people face the risk of the indiscriminate violence of terrorists. Nicaragua, despite... Night Heat, premiering this call on CTV. Saskatchewan wins 21 to 10 here at Taylor Field as we start another big CFL weekend. You know, earlier this season in the CFL, one of the highlights was the annual Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, at which time our own Frank Rigney was inducted into the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame. But Frank had some very illustrious company, uh, not the least of which was famous Bill Zock. Let's check in with Johnny Esau. During his 18-year Canadian pro football career, Bill Zock never knew the meaning of the word quit. He pushed himself and his teammates at all times with one thing in mind, and that was to win. Born in Toronto, January 26, 1918, Man Mountain Zock joined the Toronto Argonauts in 1937, where he celebrated five Grey Cup victories in ten seasons of tough two-way action at guard and tackle. In 1951, Hard Rock Zock accepted the call to move west to join former teammate Anna Stukas in Edmonton. I brought him up to Argos when he was 18 years old, uh, 6'2", 235, and hadn't even started to fill out. Uh, just a great athlete, strong. Bill was a steam fitter, and I am convinced to this day that Bill got, you know, all radiators used to be flat. Bill got mad at one, crumpled it into an accordion, and they found out then that they'd give back. That's how strong he was, and uh, I brought him out to Edmonton when he was about 34, 35, told him, don't want you to learn the offensive plays. You're going to play one way for the first time in your life. About five games later, I said, how things going to a guy could play this game till he's 60 playing one way. In four seasons with the powerhouse Edmonton Eskimos, he played under four legendary head coaches, Anna Stukas, Frank Silchok, Darrell Royal, and Frank Popivy. Those were great years for Edmonton and for the Zocker. Here, his leadership, both on and off the field, helped to bring the Grey Cup to Edmonton in 1954. His constant dedication and determination earned him the respect and friendship of many Canadian football greats like Doug Turner, Les Ascot, Steve Lebattis, Jack Wedley, Pat Reed, and his close compatriot Frankie Morris. You gotta hate him was Bill's playing motto, and teammate Normie Kwong remembers. The thing I remember most about Bill uh, Zock was that he came to Edmonton. Uh, we had a pretty fairly well set team. He was recruited by Anna Stukas and he came to us after a great career with the Toronto Argonauts. He was a little bit larger than the average lineman of that day, being about 260, but he had an upper body development like uh, you wouldn't believe, arms like steel pile drivers, and he always came prepared to play. He, he was the one responsible for writing all over the dressing rooms across Canada. You gotta hate him, and if you weren't ready to play, well, you'd better be, because he made sure you were. Congratulations, Bill. This is surely a long overdue honor for you. But of course, you realize that the selection committee works alphabetically. But you now join the ranks of football living legends like Normie Kwong of the Calgary Stampeders and Edmonton Eskimos. There are so many of Guy Bill Zox around who are playing any era, in any league, and it's so nice to see one of our guys make it again. Well, back here at Taylor Field with our isolation director, Fred Fleming. Uh, interesting football game tonight, Fred, but everybody, I think, in the country is looking forward to Sunday. The first matchup, the showdown number one between the Lions and the Bombers. Well, I like that label, showdown, because that's exactly what it's going to be. And when you take a look at it, they both have very, very strong defenses. And, you know, Roy DeWalt's the guy that gets maligned, and even though the record being 10-1, and 1, it's sometimes, I guess, the... the, the 
fans that sit back and they get a little aggravated because they don't see that consistency that they think that a quarterback should have. But I, uh, I'm looking forward to that one. You're absolutely right. Showdown number one is the best way to put that one. Then they have to go right back and do it again at BC just a few days later the following Friday. They don't get much of a rest. And before I get a chance off the air, Al, I just want to say hello to a guy like Cal Murphy, uh, just a guy that's done a heck of a job for the Canadian Football League and certainly the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So thoughts go with Cal today as well. And a lot of pressure on Freddie Glick uh, taking over the team uh, going into the big game. Huh. The only guys who get a break are the officials. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't a jungle. I don't run operations. I investigate murders. All right, listen, Frank, I'm tired of playing games. I do my own checking, too. There's bodies falling all over the place. Fighting big city crime on the graveyard shift. Night Heat, premiering this fall on CTV. Saskatchewan wins 21 to 10 here at Taylor Field as we start another big CFL weekend. You know, earlier this season in the CFL, one of the highlights was the annual Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, at which time our own Frank Rigney was inducted into the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame. But Frank had some very illustrious company, uh, not the least of which was famous Bill Zock. Let's check in with Johnny Esau. During his 18-year Canadian pro football career, Bill Zock never knew the meaning of the word quit. He pushed himself and his teammates at all times with one thing in mind, and that was to win. Born in Toronto, January 26, 1918, Man Mountain Zock joined the Toronto Argonauts in 1937, where he celebrated five Grey Cup victories in ten seasons of tough two-way action at guard and tackle. In 1951, Hard Rock Zock accepted the call to move west to join former teammate Anna Stukas in Edmonton. I brought him up to Argos when he was 18 years old, uh, 6'2", 235, and hadn't even started to fill out. Uh, just a great athlete, strong. Bill was a steam fitter, and I am convinced to this day that Bill got, you know, all radiators used to be flat. <laughs> Bill got mad at one, crumpled it into an accordion, and they found out then that they'd give back. That's how strong he was, and uh, I brought him out to Edmonton when he was about 34, 35, told him, don't want you to learn the offensive plays. You're going to play one way for the first time in your life. About five games later, I said, how things going to a guy could play this game to at least 60 play in one way. In four seasons with the powerhouse Edmonton Eskimos, he played under four legendary head coaches, Anna Stukas, Frank Silchok, Darrell Royal, and Frank Pop Ivy. Those were great years for Edmonton and for the Zocker. Here, his leadership, both on and off the field, helped to bring the Grey Cup to Edmonton in 1954. His constant dedication and determination earned him the respect and friendship of many Canadian football greats like Doug Turner, Les Ascot, Steve Levantis, Jack Wedley, Pat Reed, and his close compatriot Frankie Morris. You gotta hate him was Bill's playing motto, and teammate Norman Kwong remembers. The thing I remember most about Bill uh, Zock was that he came to Edmonton. Uh, we had a pretty fairly well set team. He was recruited by Anna Stukas and he came to us after a great career with the Toronto Argonauts. He was a little bit larger than the average lineman of that day, being about 260, but he had an upper body development like uh, you wouldn't believe, arms like steel pile drivers, and he always came prepared to play. He, he was the one responsible for writing all over the dressing rooms across Canada. You gotta hate him, and if you weren't ready to play, well, you'd better be, because he made sure you were. Congratulations, Bill. This is surely a long overdue honor for you. But of course, you realize that the selection committee works alphabetically. But you now join the ranks of football living legends like Normie Kwong of the Calgary Stampeders and Edmonton Eskimos. There are so many of Guy Bill Zox around who are playing any era, in any league, and it's so nice to see one of our guys make it again. 
Well, back here at Taylor Field with our isolation director, Fred Fleming. Uh, interesting football game tonight, Fred, but everybody, I think, in the country is looking forward to Sunday. The first matchup, the showdown number one between the Lions and the Bombers. Well, I like that label, showdown, because that's exactly what it's going to be. And when you take a look at it, they both have very, very strong defenses. And, you know, Roy DeWalt's the guy that gets maligned, and even though the record being 10-1, and one, it's sometimes, I guess, the... the, the fans that sit back and they get a little aggravated because they don't see that consistency that they think that a quarterback should have. But I, uh, I'm i looking forward to that one. You're absolutely right. Showdown number one is the best way to put that one. Then they have to go right back and do it again at BC just a few days later the following Friday. They don't get much of a rest. And before I get a chance off the air, Al, I just want to say hello to a guy like Cal Murphy, uh, just a guy that's done a heck of a job for the Canadian Football League and certainly the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. So thoughts go with Cal today as well. And a lot of pressure on Freddie Glick uh, taking over the team, uh, going into the big game. Oh. The only guys who get a break are the officials. Ha, 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 ha.